Welcome to Mexico City, the world's most populous city, home to nearly 25 million people, many of whom are fans of motorsport. Today, it's the NASCAR Bush Series, presented on Fox by Chevrolet. A huge crowd has come to this Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, named for international road racing stars of the 60s, brothers Pedro and Ricardo. They have unveiled the flags, great pomp, circumstance, and ceremony, and now we go trackside. Con mucho gusto, Patti Manterola. Con ustedes, Patti, adelante. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Siño patria, tus sienes de oliva, de la paz el arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios se escribió. Mas si os haré un extraño enemigo, profanar con su planta tu suelo, Piensa, oh patria querida, que el cielo un soldado en cada hijo te dio, un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, el acero apresta y el bridón, y retiembla en sus centros la tierra, al sonoro rugir del cañón y retiembla en sus centros la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. El aplauso, el aplauso para Patti Manterola y presentamos ahora a Ariadna. Now, the United States Anthem by Ariadna Tapia. An international atmosphere and a mix of home country heroes, led by Adrian Fernandez and Michelle Jourdain, against the regulars of the NASCAR Bush Series and drivers from Canada and Belgium to compete in Mexico City. Here are the NASCAR Bush Series points. Coming into this, race number three of the season, and all of the top ten are here, ready to race. Kevin Harvick with a nine-point lead on the season. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Mexico. Mike Joy with Larry McReynolds and Daryl Waltrip on a circuit that has been challenging, frustrating, car-breaking, you name it. Yeah, well, I went out this morning, as you well know. You were with me. Yeah. Made a few laps around this racetrack. What makes this joint so difficult is flat. And so flat tracks means when you're going fast, you might slide off. 
That's where today's race is really going to be in the driver's hands. Two things. Got to stay on the road course. Got to keep it on the paved part, not the dirty part. And that hand on the shifter, take care of that transmission because that shifting pole sticking up there, you can rip that thing right out in two laps. But, Darrell, you talk about that, and you know there's nothing like experience on a road course. We have eight drivers in this field that are making their very first NASCAR road course start. We have five drivers like Matt, Mark Gosens from Belgium making his very first boot series starting you know what a lot of these guys are starting at the front of the field i think that's where it's going to get interesting especially in the late stages of this race lack of experience in this field at road course racing yes and larry the driving styles of the road course ringers versus the bush series regulars is quite different this is going to be quite an event we're ready to race in mexico <laughs> the most important three-night edition of Idol yet because your votes decide who will be in the top 12. It's getting down to the wire now. Tuesday, the eight remain. We're getting close to the command for 43 cars in the NASCAR Bush Series here in Mexico City where it's a beautiful 77 degrees, moderate humidity. But look at the altitude. That's uh, throwing these fellows a curve. Especially those engine tuners. They definitely had to go a little bit different route to tuning these engines because of that high altitude. Training, too. I mean, you know, it's short. You get short of breath here. Just coming up the stairs, uh, it really takes it's toll, so I can imagine driving a race car around here. Are you sure that's altitude? <laughs> well, it could be age, but that's altitude. Beautiful sun-drenched crowd on hand for the second annual running of NASCAR Bush Series trip to Mexico. Let's go track some. Caballeros, encienda sus motores. Gentlemen, start your engines. Gracias, Manuel Negrete, Grand Marshal de la Tercer Motorola star of the Mexican national soccer team. A huge sport in Mexico. And a fitting choice for Grand Marshal as you have a look at some of the onboard views we'll be bringing you today. Speaking of sun drenched, let's go trackside to the executive editor of Speedway Illustrated, Dick Berggren. I'm going to be working in the pits today in English. And in that capacity, I made a sweep of the garage area today to ask crew chiefs what the smart strategy is to win this race. And I heard two strategies, each of which very different from the other. One of those strategies, be the first to make the last pit stop. Now, this is a two pit stop race. And if you're the guy that's first in for the last stop, everybody who pits behind you, well, they're going to be on track behind you. They're going to have to pass you in order to win the race. That's the most popular strategy. The other strategy, pit late for tires. Fresh tires are faster. Maybe the faster car will win. I don't know which of these two strategies is going to work out best, but if you stick around with us this afternoon, you will. Let's go to Jeff Hammond. Well, Dick, you guys keep talking about strategy and what the crew chief's got to do, but I think Darrell Walter has started the thing off right about how the drivers have got it in their control. The word today, my friend, is discipline. Who's going to have the most discipline? Number one, to come up with the right strategy and when to implement that, as well as the driver, the driver discipline. Going off into turn one, not willing to let yourself get suckered into driving in too deep, overlocking those brakes, over revving the engines. All those things are what's going to come into play today. So discipline is going to really play in today as far as who's going to go to victory lane and who's going to really have a lot of fun here at this really challenging road course. Well, Dick Berger and I got an opportunity to talk to several of these drivers earlier this morning about their feelings and thoughts about this challenging road course here in Mexico City. I'm starting on the pole, but I got 42 other guys behind me. They're like dogs with hand grenades in their mouths, so I'm going to have my work cut out for me, but I think I got the car to do it. We've got some road race aces out there, Adrian Fernandez, Boris said, Ron Fellow, so it's going to be a tough race out there today. I'm looking forward to it, though. The low Chevrolet is pretty good, and hopefully we can just have a uh, good, solid, easy run in the top 10 for most of the day and then go race them at the end. Well, it's been pretty adventurous since we got here. Uh, you know, you get you get good down at that end, and then you mess up down at this end, and you can't 
it's real hard to put a, a good lap together all eight turns. Uh, last year we had transmission problems. This year I vow to make sure I keep all four gears in it all day long. My goal is to keep the fenders on the thing and uh, have some fun. It's difficult to stay on course here. Sharp turns and high speed, that usually equals spins and slides and gravel and stuff. You know, we have to stay out there, stay out of trouble and, you know, try to to keep the tires going and, and not to uh, consume too much fuel in the beginning of the race. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see how the others are doing. But, uh, you know, stay on track is the main thing. And with that, a look at our FedEx racetrack analysis. 80 laps, 200 miles. Pit road and pace car speed, 35 miles an hour. There's the pit window, as Dick pointed out, two stops. And our road course guidelines. Yeah, you got to uh, stay on the track and fear the turtles. That's those big things that are sticking up in the chicane and around the inside of the racetrack. They're turtles. See what this guy hits one right here. As a matter of fact, whoa, Joey Chitwood style. Those things are tall. They're real tall, and you got to stay off of them. But also run your own race. It's almost like you put yourself in your own box. You put blinders on and you try to make those two stops. And like Dick Bergman's talk about, when you get to the point you know you can make it the rest of the way on fuel, hit pit road and DW. You heard David Green talk about it. So many demands on the mechanical parts here, transmission, gears, brakes. Yeah, you can actually tear a trans. A driver can, can literally tear a car up here. So now well, let's take a look at what the driver's gonna be dealing with. This is a difficult track, fun, but difficult. Here we come by the start finish line into that chicane. Tough spot down turn one, trouble there all weekend. You do a couple of D-Dido's there, go down here to turn five, great passing place, but you better not be on the outside of somebody. Now you get up through the S's, rhythm, bomb, 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 left, right, left, right, down to turn seven, and if everything goes well, you're gonna bring her back to the start finish line. Eight turns plus a chicane makes up the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City. Daryl, with the difference in styles, road race drivers like to be fast out of the corner. Stock car racers like to charge into the corner. Is this recipe for mayhem? Oh, it can be. Technique. Road racing is all technique. It's about getting the car stopped while it's still going straight. Brake and shift while you're still going into the corner, off the brake and on the gas. Stock car drivers like to drive in the corner real hard. Drive down in there and pour it in there, and that's when you get in trouble on the road course. Larry, last year, pole sitter and race leader Jorge Getters was fine until he came in to make his pit stop. Well, we saw this race won and lost on a lot what happened on pit road. Mistakes of drivers getting on pit road, not being able to get into their pit box. This pit road is very tight, but just like driving this place is a technique, calling this race is a technique from a crew chief standpoint. Like I was saying earlier, you get in your own box, you run your own race, you're trying to do this race on two pit stops only. The field rolls out from the grid and through the chicane on their first of three pace laps. Now we're ready to race in Mexico City. Fox Tuesday. From Mexico, eight drivers in the starting lineup of nine that attempted to qualify and add to them Canadians Paul Tracy and Ron Fellows and Belgium road racing ace Mark Gosens in a Robert Yates car. 
as the foreign born drivers in the field. Let's show you our Prilosec starting grid for today's race. Not surprisingly, Boris said the pole sitter. He's driving a Dodge and Denny Hamlin continues to impress. He's on the outside pole, Johnny Sauter and the hometown hero, Adrian Fernandez. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, talk to Adrian on the radio here. Adrian Fernandez, this is Daryl Walter up in the Fox Sports booth, buddy. Uh, you got a copy? Yeah, I got a copy. Uh, this ought to be a piece of cake this year, man. Last year you started in the back and uh, you were taking the lead on the 33rd lap. Uh, how you feeling about today's race, bud? Well, I hope so. I, you know, I'm so proud to drive for Rick Hendrick and the Lowe's team. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity again, and I really want to win for the Mexican fans. That would be fantastic for me, for Mexico, for NASCAR. So we're going to do the best we can, and we got a great car here. Yeah, 10-4, Adrian. Uh, does this, is this considered, would you consider this your home track? Yes, it is, because, I, you know, here I drove a long time ago, like 24 years ago for the first time. And uh, I live here, I was born here in Mexico City, so we have all our fans here, so it's very special for us. Well, I know uh, that uh, all of us guys up here in the Fox Sports booth and about 100,000 other folks will be pulling for you today. Good luck, my man, and have a great race. Thank you, my friend. Fernandez is a huge hero in Mexico. He is as big a star here as Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan in the United States, or any other single athlete you can name. When he went out to qualify yesterday, I thought something happened. The whole grandstand just stood up and started screaming, and uh, it was him coming to take the, to the green flag. And we have a few cars that will have to go to the rear of the field. Reed Sorensen in the 41 car qualified 25th. They had to change engines after Friday's practice. They'll have to go to the rear of the field. John Wood qualified 17th, but tore third gear up qualifying in the transmission. Had to change the transmission. He'll go to the rear of the field. Stacy Compton, who wrecked in qualifying, will go to the rear of the field. Jimmy Morales, Patrick Getters, Rogelio Lopez, Tim Sauter, and Joel Kaufman, unapproved adjustments. This will be the second race of the weekend on this course. The Rolex Grand Am Series was here yesterday with their Daytona prototypes. And coming off of turn eight, J.C. France in the Brumos Porsche squeezed Chris Bingham up and into the wall, exiting the corner here. Both cars torn up out. the Boggy Creek camp in Florida, one of the Paul Newman hole-in-the-wall gang camps. That's my kind of fight right there. They never took their helmets off. <laughs> I like that. Pretty, pretty sporty. That was yesterday, and uh, turn seven and eight, one of the trouble spots on this course, and turn one certainly is the other. Did that remind you of anything, that little scuffle? 1979, perhaps? <laughs> perhaps. At Daytona, the Daytona 500, Donnie Allison, Bobby Allison, Cale Yarborough. After, and that was after the finish of the race. Donnie and Cale took each other out fighting for the win, and then they had a fight in the infield. But, Mike, you were talking about turns seven and eight. This is where we're entering right now, riding with Ron Fellows, and it's very narrow. And if you notice, there is a wall on both sides. This is where they had the problem yesterday in the Grand Am race, and it's very narrow and very blind, as you can see, as you go around this corner. Yeah, as you enter the car, uh, while I was riding with Daryl this morning, while I had my eyes open, uh, <laughs> once you get, pay, even at the entry into seven, you can't even see the middle of the corner, much less the exit it's, of it's turn eight. truly a blind turn, I mean, on exit. You know, we had a very unique qualifying session here yesterday. I still think the fast is at the front of the field, but it was European style qualifying where they sent the cars out in groups of five or six and they got an opportunity to run three, four or five laps to their discretion. And that's how qualifying was determined. This is the second annual running of this race in Mexico for the NASCAR Bush Series. Let's have a look back and remind you of some of the uh, interesting things that happened here last year. For NASCAR, it is a day of firsts. It's NASCAR's first ever Bush Series race outside the United States. First of all, I love this joint. Excitement in the air. Nothing like I've seen here for the last two days. We are south of the border. Abrocha, Los Cinturones, Tango South, baby, get her done. Underlay, underlay, Arriba, Arriba. Let's go racing. No name is bigger in 
this country than that of Adrian Fernandez. And this crowd senses their local Matador hero, Adrian Fernandez, looking for the lead. Looks like the five car, Adrian Fernandez, to take the lead from last to first in 33 laps. And here comes Harvick, pounding on the outside. He's going to go all the way to second place. Wow. And yo, Rennie. Monday. Up and over. Right through the hole in the fence. Give that dog a bone. And Martin Truex will lead this race for the third time today. That's the car to beat. I like the way this is shaping up. It's going to be a good finish. Martin Truex Jr. wins the first NASCAR point race in Mexico. Scorching them babies. An eventful race in front of a packed house. Nearly 100,000 fans here last year. Uh, yesterday's crowd a little off from last year's Saturday, but a nice crowd getting ready for the start of this one. Dick Bergman. Tall grandstands are right behind this pit area, Mike, and two teams, Carl Edwards and Johnny Sauter, are having trouble hearing their pits right now. There's probably more than that, but at least those two I have heard are having difficulty. Well, guys, we talk about the size of this course, over two and a half miles, and one of the more important parts of this race course we haven't even touched on are the spotters that are positioned around the course. NASCAR mandates that there are spotters down in turn, you can see turn seven and eight as you come into the pit area, but they've also put spotters down at the far end, almost at turn one in the grandstand area, and other teams have elected to put even a third and a fourth spotter to try to make sure they give their drivers every opportunity to know if there's an accident, how to avoid it to make sure that they can make their way all the way back around and hopefully win this race. I have two items of note. One driver, Joel Kaufman, the rookie, is ailing. He spent uh, most of the morning on a stretcher, but he is in the car. He is going to start the race. And also John Wood, who was fastest in practice, was a strong threat for the pole. Didn't get it because when he went out to qualify, the new transmission they had installed would not go into third gear. He only had second and fourth. Those spotters spread around the racetrack like that are, are normal. I mean, that's normal road course procedure. Maybe different than everywhere else, but normal here. And for those teams that's having a tough time communicating, those spotters can relay messages to the driver when he's on the backside of the racetrack. As Larry pointed out, here are the drivers who will move to the back of the field for either adjustments after qualifying. This is an impound race. Uh, the cars were impounded right after qualifying, so there were adjustments made. and. Of course, Stacey Compton in a backup car after his crash. That 41 car there, uh, Breed Swanson, he was a strong contender here last year and got spun out over in turn five racing with uh, Stanton Barrett. And you can finish good from the back. It's just a challenge. Last year, Adrian Fernandez, who finished 10th, had to go to the back of the field at the start of the race because of going to a backup car. And remember, on road courses, all, all the restarts are single file. So if you come in the pit early, you're going to start 34th, 5th, 6th, Somewhere back in there. All right, they're coming around the Paratada, the banked curve, turn seven and eight. DW were south of the border just like a year ago. Approach a sudden, let's set the road this. Fletcher, I'll drop this, get her done. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. Into the bus stop chicane. Man, it's really tight back in there. Everybody trying to single file get without running over each other here on the start. And the biggest thing is getting heat in the tires and heat in the brakes as well, especially on these high speed entrances like turn one. Through two and three, which is the first of the S's. Short shoot leading up toward the NASCAR curve, turn four. I think that chicane gets everybody slowed down enough that on the first lap here, you can make turn one all right. I think once they get spread out a little bit though, that's where we'll have a lot of action. Now, after you come through the uh, Curva NASCAR, this is a torturous set of S's. It goes on and on and on. Yeah, and it, it's really just rhythm. It's, it's right, left, right, left, and you got to hit it just right. If you miss one of them, it messes up the whole S. And, Darrell, I rode around the racetrack this morning as well. Pictures do not do these S's justice. They are treacherous. Oh, no, and they're challenging, too. That's why drivers, it's, you know, it's, they love to race on a course like this, even though it's very difficult. Once you exit this corner it's a short straightaway and a good passing opportunity down to the Peraltada as under pressure for the lead Boris said Denny Hamlin trying the inside well he's there I mean he's got that nose underneath Boris and Denny Hamlin in the 20 car we're riding with him he'd love to get five points for leading this lap but Boris said in the nine our pole sitter will lead lap one Boris got off that corner of turn uh, eight there really well that time Around the chicane, nice and clean. 
Now here's the real challenge. Turn one, they put markers up. You see them on the left there to help the drivers because so many guys were sliding off that turn one in practice and qualifying. Best thing Denny Hamlin can do right now is go to school on Boris because he is an expert at this type of racing in these big cars. Yeah, Denny doesn't need to show Boris what he can do. He needs to let Boris show him what he can do. And Darrell, wouldn't you say there's no sense in pushing the envelope this early in the race, getting yourself in trouble, using those tires up, knowing that you're going to have to go a long way as we have J.J. Yaley in the 18 car, comes in here second in the points. He's off the track. Off of turn one and back on. It's Randy LaJoy in the zero just ahead of Yaley. Looks like he's having trouble really getting back up to speed. There he is off on the right there, right after turn one. I gotta believe he probably just got loose coming around turn one and slid off to the to the uh, right there. Tell you what, he was very lucky. There's not a lot of runoff room right there in that area. Looking for Ron Fellows. Paul Menard just Whoa, ahead, uh, and Menard and Yaley get together. Looks like he tried to exterminate him. Did <laughs> a pretty good job of it. Two laps complete, Boris said, Denny Hamlin, Adrian Fernandez in third. John well, Sauter, Mark. Just watch those cars go through there, though, Mike. Love it. A lot of those guys are saying they can run that wide open. I don't believe you can do that later on in the race when the tires give up, but right now they are flying through that chicane. And that really sets you up for turn one down here and whether you're going to be able to make a pass or not. Fernandez there in third. In the lowest 57, Johnny Sauter right behind. And here is Kyle Busch in eighth. And he's closing in on Jamie McMurray. This is a funny turn, turn five. You need to go a late entrance into that turn, but it opens the bottom up for somebody to drive in under you and slam into you. So you really got to respect the guy in front of you and the line he's trying to run. And curb hopping here will do you no good at all. Those curbs, all they'll do is throw the race car completely out of bounds. Well, and you can bend the valence on the front, lose some of your aerodynamic downforce. So you've got to really be as precise as you can. And really, as our key said in the opening of the show, keep it on the track. This is where Ron Fellows, who's in that white Kevin Harvick car, said was a great place to pass, getting a launch out of the S's to come around the stadium at turn seven and eight. And yet Menard is distancing him just a little bit now. And the guys are all running real low in uh, turn seven and eight this year. Last year they said they could run out a little wider, but they just don't find the grip out there this year that they had last year. Got a little harder tire on the front of the cars than we had last year. And definitely I think the racetrack is different. Plus, I mean, it's hot here today. You Whoa. saw 77 degrees there. This track is slick. It's, uh, it's a hot 77 degrees. It's dry. And uh, that track temperature's got to be way up there. Is riding with Ron Fellows in the 33 car. We saw him a while ago. Right now, he's running in the 10th position. Funny grip on the steering wheel. Look how he uh, wraps his fingers around the spokes in the wheel. Don't see that very often. A lot of shifting around this racetrack. You spend a lot of time in second gear, especially in these slow corners and up through the S's. Yeah, the guys are all saying they wish that NASCAR would allow them to just select the gears themselves for a road course rather than mandating gears. Yeah, the transmission gears as well as the rear end gear are mandated. Well, you see road racers do two, one of two things, Darrell, either hold at nine and three like Fellows is doing or shuffle steer, move the wheel and make your hands move a lot so that your hands stay at nine and three and the wheel moves. One of the things that uh, some of the road racers have done and, and have taught these other guys is they put a quick uh, quickener on the steering box to make it like go from a 12 to 1 to an 8 to 1 or even a 6 to 1 steering ratio. Tell you what, the lead is tightening up here. Boris said in the 9 still leading as we complete lap 4, but Denny Hamlin in the 20. I, I tell you, this is pretty impressive. It was impressive for Denny Hamlin in that qualifying run yesterday in the 20, but impressive that he's staying up there with Boris said. Whoa, big blow up there is Stacy Compton. Not a good weekend for him. Kingsford Charcoal Ford, he backed it into the wall in qualifying. This is a backup car. Ooh. A lot of water and whatnot coming out the pipes. Yeah, that's going to bring out a caution because that's fluids. Now, the way the caution is displayed here is two different ways. If it is a local incident, which right now this is, the corner workers will wave a blue flag saying there is a problem ahead of you. 
If at the start finish line the caution flag is waved, then a yellow flag will be waved all around the circuit. The scoring loops will determine running position and the whole field comes under the pace car. So the blue flag in road racing that's often used as a passing flag. Here it's used as what road racers would know as a local yellow. Just local incident. We're not under caution. Just be careful. Now, we do have the full course caution at lap five. This is a little early for pit stops. Again, we want to get to that window. We're running the race backwards, but there's no question a lot of the guys at the back, I think you're going to see them coming to pit road, no. Jeff Hammond. That's right, Larry McReynolds, and right now we're going to get, take a look at uh, the 64 car, Jimmy McMurray. They were talking early on. If they got an early caution around 8 to 10, they would gamble, come down pit road early and try to get out of sync so they could get advantage of, like Dr. Dick Berger said earlier, trying to get their own little sync synchronization, their own pit strategy going is important here today. Now, Larry, explain this. We're running the race backwards. Yeah, as we saw in the beginning, you can run about 35 laps on fuel. This is an 80-lap race. That basically means if you get to lap 45, you want to make sure you make your final pit stop then, and then about lap 10 to 12, like Jeff Hammond was saying, that's when you want to make your first pit stop. The, the gamble is how many cautions will we have. Based on last year, we'll probably have plenty. Yeah, if this, if this goes to uh, three or four caution laps, some of the guys in the back will come in. First caution of the day. You're watching NASCAR Bush Racing on Fox, presented by Chevrolet. <laughs> Here's to Team Chevy. The deal presented by Chevrolet is sponsored by Pizza Hut, home of the new Cheesy Bites Pizza. Gather around the good stuff. By Radio Shack. By ING. See why it's easier on the bench. ING, your future made easier. And by Team Chevy and the 303 horsepower Monte Carlo SS, an American revolution. Okay, so Larry, if everybody knows what the strategy is, how come everybody doesn't fit? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, Daryl, that, that a lot of teams, like, as I mentioned, lap 10, if you can make your first stop by lap 10 to 12, knowing you can make it from the to the end on one stop, I think these guys are going to be banking on cautions. I think we'll see a busy pit road, and we may see, I think it'll either be four tires or fuel only. You don't really see a lot of two-tire stops at a road course. What I see is a lot of speedy drive yeah, down, and too. nobody driving through it to work it in or... Now, you don't want to, you know, your tires are hot. Yep. When you ride through that stay dry, I mean, I've had guys tell me it'll ruin a set of tires. Well. And NASCAR's hauling at you, we want you to drive through it, and you're saying, mm -mm, not me. Get the blower out. See Denny Hamlin in the 20 car. He peels off as well as Adrian Fernandez. Looks like Boris said is going to stay out. Even in the pit lane, Mike, or stay yeah. dry everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, that tells me that NASCAR's told them are going to be one to go next time by. There's Adrian Fernandez in the 57 car. Jeff Hammond, four tires and full of fuel. Four tires and fuel of fuel is exactly what they were looking for. The car was just a little bit tight. They're going to make a little bit of an air pressure adjustment, Larry, but that's about it. Otherwise, he's happy with his race car. Dick Berger. Denny Hamlin, who qualified second and was running second, has pitted. The car is running hot, 230 degrees. They have just pulled two pieces of tape off the nose. It's also pushing. They're going to try to adjust for that. And radio problems for Hamlin. He'll rejoin the field in the back of the pack. Almost a collision on pit road. Almost nailed it. And another one as Clint Boyer pulls out and the 32 of Jason Leffler pulls in. Another near miss and uh-oh, Leffler's not in his pit box. So they've had to stop, roll him into the pit box. They may have more trouble than that on Leffler's car. Hey, Mike, on the Hamlin car, if the thing is pushing already and they had to take tape off the nose, Larry will tell you this, that uh, that's going to lose some of the no uh, downforce on the nose. That's going to really aggravate that push. But I'm not surprised you had to pull tape off as hot as it is. And when you're out there racing on the road course, you just do not get a lot of airflow through to the radiator. 13 cars came on pit road. Oh, there's the telltale sign on the right of your screen. And Slap. actually, running under caution, it'll actually get hotter uh, because there's not enough air going through the radiator. And they have that overflow over there on the right side of the windshield where if the driver's not looked at the water temperature gauge, he'll look at that and see that and know there's a problem. You know why? Because drivers historically don't look at their gauges. All right, Jeff is in Jamie McMurray's pit. Yeah, and Larry McReynolds touched on it earlier about some guys may come down and just go gas only. And that's exactly what Jamie McMurray and his group decided to do. Gas only. They're going to try to save their tires. They feel like they may have to make another stop and make an adjustment on their race car. And tires, we talked about earlier, could be very important toward the end of this race. 
Couple of close calls on pit road. Clint Boyer, Jason Leffler was one. Here is the other as Hamlin comes out. Oh man, the spotter just, I mean, wow. you can tell that the nose dropped just before Michael turned in. Cause you know the spotter was screaming at him. And, and Daryl, I've been saying this for five years. I put a lot on the crew chief's shoulders. You know, the driver's in there. He's got the head and neck restraint device. He's got the headrest. He can't see that car coming. It's on the crew chief's shoulders. If nothing else, just say stop. Yeah, just say it, stop. And all your all the drivers hearing is go, go, go. Get out of here. Go. Clear out. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds too much like, like go, go, go. 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 <laughs> So that makes 14, at least 14 drivers that stopped, uh, make it a total of 17 that have stopped under this caution. Yeah, that was Denny Hamlin's crew chief right there, Dave Rogers, that we were looking at, actually. And Mike, you mentioned that uh, go, go, go and whoa, 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 but that was one of the things Hammond and I, we finally had to say, look, you've got to just say stop, because that whoa, whoa, whoa didn't get it. And even Hammond understood that. No free pass on this caution. All drivers who are running were running on the lead lap. And we'll have a single file restart for this caution brought out by Stacy Compton. What a tough season he's had. Man. Wrecked you know, at Daytona. Was running third on the last lap at Daytona and got crashed. Finished 27th. Crashed a brand new car here yesterday qualifying. And now this. Short day for the Kings for Charcoal team. And of course they got no practice with that car being an impound racing because he, the crash happened in qualifying. Now folks. We're getting ready for a restart here, and I want you to look at this line of cars. Uh, it's not like an oval race where you can double up on the inside, which we haven't had any lapping anyway. But the guy that's starting back there about 25th to, uh, on back, uh, he's going to be a long way behind the leader when he gets a green. But it's real important for those guys that did not stop and change tires. We talked about how hot these tires are to really get those tires cleaned off. Or you'll spin them on this restart. And that's why you have to weigh, Larry, between do I come in or do I stay out? Because do I want to restart in 25th or do I want to restart up here near the front? All right, seven laps will be completed in the Telcel Motorola 200 presented by Banamex as the green flag waves again. Now, how about those first two up there? We got Boris said and uh, Mr. Goosen, the goose, the goose may be loose. Mark Gosen's from Belgium, driving for Robert Yates in the city financial Ford. I mean, we got Getters up there. Kyle Busch up to third, Jorge Getters in the 66. Now talk about strategy. I think what happened is Ashton Lewis Jr. in the 25 car and pretty much Danny O'Quinn Jr. in the 50 car. I think this was at their window to make it a one stop. When we got the green flag, they hit pit road and topped it off with fuel. You can still do that, Larry, because you're still only going to be about 20 seconds behind the leader when you get back out on the pit on, out on the racetrack. So that's not a bad strategy. Coming up to turn four, Adrian Fernandez makes the pass on Randy LaJoy. Fernandez works the outside. I'll tell you, it's a, it takes a brave man and a good car to pass through the S's. John Wood battling Mark McFarland. Wood saw, takes the spot in the 47. Saw John get up on the curve there and just how high that car jumped up off the ground. Second place, Gosen's trying to hold back Kyle Busch. There's uh, Paul Menard right there with him. Jorge Getters who sat on the pole here last year, running right in that pack in fourth. And right behind this group, I noticed on the restart, Ron Fellows in the 33 car, he did his best to take advantage of Paul Menard in the 11 to get that position, and he did before they got to turn one to take that spot over. Now he's in the fifth spot, Ron Fellows in the 33. You're riding with Fellows. We're not sure what that is on the hood of his car, except that it's the an emblem of Kevin Harvick racing. It's a smiley face with a wink in flames. In fl I was going to say, Harvick pointed out, it has flames, DW. That's right. But he has it on He has it on the front of his motor coach. I mean, it's pretty much on everything he owns. I think what he'd rather have on there is a sponsor. Probably. But it looks pretty good. Yeah, we had about about 19 or 20 cars that actually elected to stay out on that last caution. Half the field, more or less. Paul Tracy made a big move early in this race. He's in the number four, uh, the Geico Dodge. Started 23rd, and the former.
cart champion is up to eight. He's doing it. You know, I really am impressed with Paul's efforts in the in the bush and the series this year. He was great at Daytona. I thought he did an outstanding job for a guy that you know not a lot of drafting experience. Got to look on the inside there by Kyle Busch. Wasn't able to pull it off, but I've been real impressed with Paul. I, I'm, I tell you, he's doing a good job in the stock cars. He told me this morning he's having a blast. He's here to have fun. He likes the course, and uh, he's acclimated to the cars, and he, he's here to have fun today. And you want to go where the action is, man. You want to go where the where the racing is, and uh, and I think that's why he's here, trying to get himself in here and maybe get him a cup ride. I tell you what, a car running right there just in front of Paul Tracy, Michelle Jordan Jr. in the 15 car started back in 14th. As we see Kyle Busch in the five still battling Mark Gosens in that 90 car. And this is a battle that continues for the second position behind leader Boris said. Larry, we talked about the sucker hole. Daryl does it. Daytona yeah. getting in the middle. Well, here the sucker hole is that inside of turn one. You get down there, but you got to turn the car so tight. I think, Daryl, that's a hard place to try to pass. Turn one, and then again, right here where they are right now. It's just a real wide entrance. See how far out the five car went? And here comes the, the 66 of Getters looking underneath. So it opens the door for trouble, right, Dick? Well, yeah, it does. I'm watching Kyle put Kyle Bush right now, though, Daryl, and I am in his pit, and he has been told to pit uh, this lap. I asked his crew chief, Chad Walter, why he didn't pit with his teammate. Walter just looked at me and said, we didn't have to. Well, they have to now. The well, he couldn't make it. Yeah, That's the window why. opens. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we were just talking before we had that battle about Michelle Jordan Jr. now in the 15 car. This program for him in this third PPC car just came about about a week ago. Now, he's hobbling around the garage area doing great in the race car. He was at a photo shoot earlier in the week on a horse and was thrown off the horse and injured his knee, but doing a great job in his 15 car today. I tell you, every time I put a quarter in one of them, that's what happens to me. <laughs> Kyle Busch surrenders third place to come to pit road. This is a scheduled stop. First of two and you should be able to pit here and stay on the lead lap Dick. Well he's got nobody in front of him Mike nobody behind him. He's going to be all by himself coming down pit road. Crew is ready for him. Everybody's cool. Crew chief Chad Walter counting him down three two one. Here he is. It's going to be a four tire stop which is what we anticipate seeing all day long on this racetrack. Bush has had a drink of water, just threw the bottle of water out. Uh, I guess you could do that in Mexico. Somebody will come along and pick it up for you. Right sides are on the way now. Crew's doing a nice job, nice smooth stop. Bush is cool, he's gone. But Dick Bird, when you talked about it at the top of the show, what the five car hopes now, he gets back out on the racetrack. We talked about 20 cars that did not pit. He actually hopes a caution comes out here in the next little bit. And those cars that have now stayed out, they'll have to come to pit road under caution and he'll gain on that track position. One thing we didn't mention is they're pitting the wrong side of the car. Uh, the pit lane is on the right side of the racetrack, so you go to the left side of the car first, which is completely different from what the crews have to do most all year. It, it really throws it off. I mean, it's something these guys have to practice a lot before coming to a road course. We pit the same way at Watkins Glen. Adrian Fernandez after that stop in 19th position, 14 seconds off, and here's Denny Hamlin working past John Woods, Clorox Ford, trying to move back up through. Now they're definitely getting the advantage, even though it was only five less laps than, than on the tires of the other cars, but they're definitely getting an advantage because remember, all the cars had to start the race on the cars they qualified on yesterday, which had a heat cycle and some laps on them. Uh, that's just a great top 10, though. Look at the names in the top 10 there, the rundown. Sid, Gosen. Getters, Fellows, Menard, Jordan, Tracy, Contreras, and an Andretti. What a group. Fernandez inside of Mark McFarland, the rookie, who is uh, one of the drivers contending his first road course start ever. And that chassis Mark McFarland is driving, the 88 car there, Junior Motorsports bought this from DEI. That's the chassis that went to Victory Lane here a year ago with Martin Truex Jr. Farland behind Fernandez. Ooh, little locking up the tires, I bet you, right there with that smoke flying out. And 34 car was locking up there, getting a, smoking the tires. Easy to do getting down in that turn five. Carlos Pardo and Fernandez takes advantage on the outside. Moves up on Jamie McMurray in the 64. I like the way uh, Adrian's car looks. Uh, it's really accelerating nice. Car looks like it's handling good. Could be bad news for these guys, but the pitch strategy they've already employed. We know their goal probably right now is be on pit road one more time and one more time only. 
Morris said the leader in a dodge Mark Gosens Jorge Getters Ron Fellows Paul Menard Michelle Jourdain Paul Tracy Carlos Contreras John Andretti the entire top nine are road course aces. I know it's only been a month, but I have a really good feeling about us. Bush Racing on Fox, presented by Chevrolet in Mexico City. Things have got businesses picked up. Jamie McMurray and Adrian Fernandez have had a little bit of bumping and shoving that has ended up in both cars going off the course and coming back on. And uh, not without damage, we might add. There's Adrian's car. And as you can see, both sides of both corners of the front end are all bent in. That's not going to help him any. Both cars pitted under the first caution and were working their way back up through. Fernandez had fresh tires. McMurray did not. His pit stop was for gas only. But we don't see any smoke. That, that means the fenders aren't rubbing the tires that much. But these two guys, they were getting after each other here a little bit before they actually put each other out of business. McMurray's on pit lane. Here's the first of it. You see McMurray, he's loose. He's loose up in front of Adrian, and he, Adrian gets a little run on him right there and knocks him sideways. Doesn't spin him out. But then, later on, he, oh, he, whoa, that's Jamie. He, he, he got, got up on the turtles, yeah, and yeah, the car yeah. got loose with him, and he couldn't correct it. Yeah, so that was not a, it was not any kind of retaliation. What did you say at the beginning of the show? Beware of the turtles. Beware of those turtles. So they're off in the runoff area at turn one, and it took them a long time to get back on course. There's McMurray going. And they end up way over here in the runoff area of turn one. Now, took them about 15 seconds to get back to the racetrack. Jorge Gators comes to pit road. Dick Berger. And Gators is one of the real veterans at this racetrack, Mike. He has run here for 10 years in Bush competitions, formula cars, prototypes. He has won here three times. He's got the veteran Newt Moore on his box calling the shots for this automobile. This could be a very nice strategy. He'll have plenty of fuel to make it to late in the race to take that second pit stop and pretty decent tires as well. Mark McFarland is in as well to make a stop. Scheduled pit stops under green. Yeah, I just wanted to stress that the, even though it's under green, even though it's early in the race, these are all scheduled stops because now these teams know, regardless green or caution, they can make it to the end of the race on one more pit stop, which is very important. But Jeff Hammond, I think there was a story with Adrian Fernandez and the 57 car strategy. Yes, there was. I got a chance to talk to some of the guys after they made that first pit stop, and there was a little bit of miscommunication right there. They actually wanted Adrian to stay out. He wanted to stay out, but it's just like I said, they couldn't make the decision quick enough, and he wound up following Denny Hamlin down pit road. They got back here in that traffic. They got some damage to the car, but again, talking to the crew members right now, Adrian said everything feels okay. They're going to try to stay out, but right now they look like they're jumping up and getting ready up on the wall. They may have a problem, guys. Well, I think the front end is tore up so bad, Jeff. He's running about a second off of what leader Boris said. He has lost all the downforce in that car, and very well, the tow out could be knocked out. Second place car on pit road. That is Mark Gosens, the road racer from Belgium, who is in a one race ride for Robert Yates. That's number 90. And one of the things I think is difficult for some of these guys on these one offs is making pit stops, getting in your pit box, and knowing exactly how to get in and out of the pits. Jason Keller, the Mikasuki Dodge, in as well. And Daryl, now that we're 16 laps into this run, we know you can make it on one more stop from here. If I'm Boris said, Ron Fellows, Paul Menard, Michelle Jourdain, I don't know that I'm going to be very much longer before I come to pit road because the worst thing can happen, we talked about it a while ago, is get a caution now and you have to come to pit road. And Adrian Fernandez in the 57, he has made a pit stop. Pulling out the fender, Jeff. Yes, they are, Mike. They're trying to make sure they get all the fenders away, get a little bit more downforce on the front of the car. You see the tire carriers, tire changes working, trying to get everything pulled away, and Adrian Fernandez is away. Didn't see any other kind of problems right there, so hopefully they can make this car better for him so he can make his way back up toward the front. Yeah, I mean, Larry, you're exactly right. And as a driver, you're sitting out there leading the race, and you don't want to give up the lead. You know, I'm happy. My car's good. I'm leading the race. Why would I pit? But it's strategy, man. you got to have that road course strategy. Boris knows that as good as well as anyone. But I think what happened while ago with Adrian Fernandez, what those guys didn't like, they didn't want to put him back there in the middle of all those cars. It ended up getting him in trouble. Ron Fellows in the 33 zone pit road, but he's not at 35 miles per hour. Looks like he may have a problem. Or appears to be out of gear and coasting in. Yeah, he's looking for a way to get it behind the wall, I think. 
Yeah, we know he's not out of fuel at only 17 laps, but we're hearing that he has no power to the engine. But Ron, Ron has had I'm no luck. Fellows, a mainstay of the Chevrolet Corvette International Road Race. The wide open, oh, the wide open. Try and get her up. Still Ron Fellows' radio, Crew Chief Wally Rogers. Finally makes it to his pit box. Can't imagine he's out of fuel, Larry. Should not be out of fuel unless they've got a serious pickup problem. This is only really about halfway through a fuel run. Big guys, get the tape. Get the tape. On start. Kenny Wallace, you see, going by in the AutoZone Ford, pitting for the second time. You he's know what? Uh, if I was him, I'd, I'd hit my button on my steering wheel. The button. way he holds that, the kill button, the way he holds that steering wheel, he could have easily hit that kill button, and he needs to reset it. And what that button is, that's a button that NASCAR put on the driver's steering wheel a few years ago. If the throttle hangs, you can hit that button on the steering wheel, and it'll kill the power to the engine. And it's so easy to hit, particularly when you hold the steering wheel at three the kill and switch on the steering wheel. There you go. They asked yep. it. They asked him right then had he hit that button. A tough break for the Not light be on or off. The light should be on. They have a light that tells him if that button has been engaged or not, and they're asking him, is that light on or off? They've reached the end of the pit road. That's as far as the crew is allowed to push that car. Now they'll have to roll it back. And I'm going to tell you what, I've been a part of pushing these cars up and down pit road. I know Jeff Hammond is. Now we've got the 50 car, Danny O'Quinn Jr. off the racetrack, and we have a full course caution. And at 7,300 feet altitude, pushing a race car, you're not going to last long. This is the caution that Boris said did not want to see in that nine car, because now he's going to have to pit under caution. He'll be back in the pack like Adrian Fernandez. Yeah, that's our full course caution. Caution is our full course. Paul Menard, who has an extensive road racing resume, is up to second. If I, I if I was a nine car now, Larry, I'd stay out until I got to, until I, I had to pit and pit under green. Be better be in the pack of that storm, wouldn't it? Trust me. <laughs> second full course yellow of the day. Since FedEx started sponsoring the number 11 car, we've been overwhelmed with interest from our fans. <laughs> Bush Series Racing on Fox, presented by Chevrolet, is sponsored by Allstate, official partner of NASCAR. We're under the second full course caution. This one for Danny O'Quinn, who has gone for a spin. Uh, the rookie running in his first road course race. Before said Paul Menard, Michelle Jourdain, Carlos Contreras have not yet pitted. And the nine is discussing just what we're talking about, whether to pit now or whether to stay in their window. Uh, they're, they're bannering that around right now between driver and crew chief. Yeah, what you could do is go to lap 27, which is about eight laps away, and run 27, 27, and 27. Now, this is why we are under caution. Danny O'Quinn Jr. in the 50 car, one of those cars that pitted under green, out there by himself, just uh, came around with him and got loose. Dick Bergeron. See what Dick Berger knows. He's down there in the nine pit. Well, I think they've been listening to you, Darrell. Boris said, Trip Bruce have just decided that they're not going to pit on this caution. They're going to stay in their window. And indeed, they think they can go all the way to lap 27. But it's likely that they will pit slightly before that. On the other hand, they have been discussing this ad infinitum since that yellow flag came. And I wouldn't be totally surprised to see him come down pit road. Well, it's real tempting, Doc. But you've got to discipline yourself. Talk about that early to stay on your own game plan, run your own race. Said Menard Jourdain Contreras. Uh, all road racers. Paul Menard has won some Trans Am races. He's competed in open wheel and now he will come to pit road. And the 57 is Adrian Fernandez, who was a lap down. He is going to get the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. So he will pit with the lead lap cars. This is a little different than oval track uh, uh, procedure. He'll pit with the lead lap cars, then go up next to the pace car and wait to be waved around when they get the one to go sign. Yeah, it's really odd because they give him the, the wave him around when they're coming to get to green. So you really don't get the advantage of closing all the way up to the back. But you will get a lot of distance on the race leader. And right. You'll be about half a lap down when the green waves, which is a lot better than where you were. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just uh, they don't give him enough time to catch all the way up. 
Michelle Jourdain is in the pits, the Roche Franz car. That's a petroleum company here in Mexico. See Johnny Sauter in a double zero. Carly Cont Contreras in the 14 who had not pitted. He makes his pit stop. Clint Boyer, Bernie Lamar, Michelle Jourdain Jr. in the 15. And we uh, listened in on Adrian Fernandez talking with his crew about what happened between he and Jamie McMurray. How's that driving now? How's that driving now? It's not perfect, babe. The fuel bullet is crooked. Not perfect, babe. The fuel bullet is crooked. Not that he really hurt my hand, but I'm okay. Um, I think it's okay. It's a little bit, little bit weird when I turn right. And Daryl, when he says the steering wheel's crooked, they, they have a, a, the spoke straight across. And we talked about it a while ago. When he probably hit those wheels, it probably knocked the toe out out, which affects the handling. And uh, this, of course, a golden opportunity to get in here, work on it. And uh, he's not out of this thing by any means. Several incidents already today, only two caution flags. Let's have a look at this Visa race break. And what's happened on the track today on this eight turn road race course. Lap five, Stacy Compton driving a backup car after crashing and qualifying, goes up in smoke. Pretty good oil down, and then Jamie McMurray hops the turtles in the chicane, comes back in track right in front of Adrian Fernandez, and they go off uh, agricultural racing. JJ Yaley off the bumper of Paul Menard. Went around, no caution for that one. Yaley recovered. And there is Yaley on track. Tell you what, he's made a nice recovery. We saw the spin. He was one of the cars that pitted back on lap six, and now he's up there running in the sixth position, anticipating he only has to make probably one more pit stop. Nice recovery. This has been a Visa race break. Whatever life takes, life takes Visa. He's got the car banged up a little bit. All four corners showing a little wear there, but the car must be running good to get back where he is. Tell you what, you see the car right behind him there, Reed Sorensen in the 41 car. Remember, he had to start this race at the rear of the field, made his pit stop as well back on lap six. He's up in the top ten. I put a little money on him. He was pretty good here last year. I think he could have won this race had had an altercation over in turn five. 19 cars pitted under this caution. Restart single file. I love I love this road course racing strategy. There's Rusty Wallace, the, the owner of the 64 car driven by Jimmy McMurray. This is the Mac Daddy of all <laughs> war wagons on pit road. Wow. It's got more seats on top of it than they got the grandstands. It's got a killer stereo. It's got a big screen plasma TV. I don't you know. Name it. It's got it. I don't know if it has anything to do with racing or not, but it sure looks good. <laughs> Leave it to Wallace. They've got a little chrome on it. He will not put flames on it, though. He no. told me that. No. Now McMurray still on the lead lap, but he's the last car on the lead lap back in the 35th position in the 64 car. And I remember Adrian Fernandez, when the field gets to turn four, he'll be waved around the pace car and be able to catch up as much as he can before the green flag waves on the field. So now Fernandez has just crossed the start finish line as the field comes up on turn seven and eight and they'll be headed for green. And it'll put Fernandez about half a lap back. Now, Boris needs to get himself a little gap between him and the guy running second back there, Menard, right now. So he, when he comes on pit road, he doesn't get run over from behind. So uh, I'm sure everybody knows what his plan is. But I like his strategy, Larry. Uh, if you didn't come that first time at ten, eight or ten laps, this is the way to run the race. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much made their bed. Now they've got to stick with the agenda that they have now, and that's probably coming to pit road in the next five to seven laps. Green flag, green flag, green flag. Hamlin ducks inside, makes a pass, moves up to third in line. He's going to go for second here, try to outbreak Carlos Pardo, getting down into turn one, takes sure. the second position away. Got to be some giving and taking right here. Now, Pardo is a lapped car. Remember, single file restart. Wherever you are in the running order is where you restart. They do not move the lap car, the, the uh, excuse me, lead lap cars up to the front until the last 10 laps of this race. See Kevin Harvick back there in the 21 car. 
He's sitting there in the third position right now, trying to wrestle around these lap cars. Now, I like Morissette's strategy because they'll make this pit stop and come back on track, hopefully on a clear track without a lot of this traffic to cycle things around through. It's a Formula One style strategy. We'll run our race, you folks go run yours. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, you won't know where you stand until we get way on into the race. It's gonna look ugly here for a little while, but it'll pay off. Next oh, Sunday, NASCAR yeah. on Fox, Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, baby. Here's Harvick, Whoa. Whoa. contact Yaley. It's a little punch from Pardo. He almost tried to go into a hole that was not quite there just yet. Under braking there for turn seven. Yeah, the 34 car's got an issue with brakes. So every time we look up, he's got smoke flying off those front tires. So whatever, uh, whatever's going on with that car is ma mainly brake problems. And look who's caught our leader. And Denny he Hamlin. will probably make a pass on him before uh, Boris makes his pit stop. Now the first 10 or so laps of this race, Hamlin went to school on Boris set. Let's see how patient he is this time around. And just remember, these tires that's on Boris Sed's car, our leader right now, the nine car, they've been on there since before qualifying yesterday. He had to qualify on them, and now he's still out there on them here at lap 22. Right, well, Larry. The leader's last lap was three seconds slower than his best lap. And JJ continues to move up there in the 18 car. He's the 18 fourth. and the 20 are, of course, their teammates, so they both got great race cars today. That 20 car looks really fast, about like the eight of true action here last year. Right now, everybody's just kind of working things out and, uh, and, and figuring out what they're going to do next. Now, Paul Tracy in the four car, he has moved up to the ninth position. Now, he a lot like Kyle Busch in the five that's running just in front of him. They're two of the teams that elected to make that pit stop under green after that caution. So right now, they're kind of on a different agenda, Jeff Hammond. Yes, Larry, they are. They did it pit, pit right around lap 12. They got four tires, but the car also was running just a little bit warm at that time. They elected to pull some tape off the front of it. And Paul said, otherwise, hey, guys, I got a pretty good hot rod right now, and he's making a pretty good run. But right now, Jorge Getters is all over the back bumper of that four car. Jorge in the 66 car, he's another car that pitted under green back on lap 15 for four tires. I think Paul Tracy's going to look back someday on his career and say, I wish I'd have moved down there with those NASCAR boys a little bit sooner in my life. Now, this is quite a battle right here. You see Kyle Busch in the five car. He just got by Michael Waltrip in the 99, and that's a battle for the sixth position right now. You see Ron Fellows in the 33. He's out there a lap down, had that ignition problem, uh, power to the engine problem a while ago. Some of that locking up the tires again on the 34 car. Oh, He's Bernie Lamar. Whoops. Off track, Lamar. Young rookie driver there. He's been doing a great job. Yeah, he was running in the 19th position when this happened just a second ago. And we heard in the opening, you know, he said, all I want to do is stay out of trouble. Uh, we found a little bit right there. And we need to mention that Joel Kaufman in the 12 car is behind the wall. His transmission was leaking. Bernie Lamar just uh, looks like he maybe just got loose. Yeah. We've been seeing a lot of cars. And look at Michelle uh, Jordan yeah. in the 15 car. Where'd he come from? <laughs> I've got to wonder if Patrick Getters might have got into the back of Lamar. Whoa, Mikey, where are you going, dude? Take care of that old dream machine. He talked about slipping and sliding. Yeah. As he was talking to Jeff Hammond and Dick Berger. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, there's debris in turn two, and we're not surprised after all that. And that'll put us under our third full course caution of the day. It comes out working lap 25. Well, now Boris has got a pit. Uh, this is right in his pit window, so I'm saying he'll be coming to pit road. Third caution, Boris said, has led all of the first 24 laps in Mexico City. Name's Larry. I'm the... Welcome back to NASCAR on Fox. Third caution of the day. This one for debris in turn two. Have a look at our Chevy drivers to watch. Denny Hamlin up for second. Kevin Harvick, runner up here last year. He's in third. J.J. Yaley in fourth place. That's a pretty familiar from last year top ten there. Uh, with the exception of a couple of guys, but that's some of the same fellas that were up front right here last year. 
pretty much all of these cars have made a pit stop. The only one that has not is that nine car, Boris said here, that sat on the pole and has led the first 25 laps. Interesting how things cycle around. Paul Tracy made that stop uh, early on. Uh, I believe he stopped under green after we went back to green. No, he, he stopped and restarted 38th. Things have cycled around to where Tracy is now the eighth place car. Well, that's what Boris is going to have to have happen now. Uh, he's going to be back in about 38th when they go back green, probably. I don't know, though, Larry. What do you think? I mean, I'm, I'm not so sure some of these front guys won't come in, too. Yeah, I mean, you, you would still you would still have to make another stop from here. So I don't know. I, I, Daryl, I just believe we, we saw what happened to Adrian Fernandez getting back in the pack. And I just, the safest place, even though you may not like the tires you're on, is up in the front of this field. Yeah, I was just thinking about tires. And I, I'm not sure uh, Jeff and, uh, and Doc can maybe find out if tires are an issue or not. I mean, I know we're not having a tire problem. I just wonder if they're right. falling off a lot. Let's start with Dick. Well, Boris Shedd is going to be coming down pit road very shortly. He's going to take four tires. Virtually no change whatsoever in his automobile. Uh, he likes the car. He's lost grip front and rear. That's big, no big surprise, given that he's run on the same tire since the green flag has dropped. Uh, no complaints about the race car. They're exactly on course. This is what they had planned to do. They didn't want to go too tight on their pit stop so that they would be threatened by running out of fuel. Jeff? Well, speaking of running out of fuel, the 41 car right now, Reed Sorensen, he's kind of watching things because he had a vibration that came out, came, developed about lap 11. The vibration hasn't gone away, and to be honest with you right now, everybody can ask you thinking, we probably got an engine problem. It may get worse as the day goes on. See Boris said in the nine, hitting pit road. They'll get one lap to go to green. Whoa. When they come to the line, Lonely, I'm Mr. Lonely. And you can see pretty much all of the other leaders staying out because as we mentioned here at lap 25 with 55 laps to go, you know, you've still got another pit stop to make. Even if you stop here, this is Boris Sed's first pit stop though. I got nobody pitting it'll, with me, it'll Dick. All be okay. Well, they're right on schedule, but the thing that's a bit of a surprise to me is this morning, Trip Bruce, the crew chief, told me that track position was more important than tires. And here they have just lost a good bit of track position. They have a great pit crew going over the wall today. This is the same pit crew that pits Casey Kane's Nextel Cup car. So these guys are fast. They're going to do a good job for Boris Zed, but he still will leave the pits way in the back behind everybody else. Jamie McMurray also makes a stop. It's McMurray's second stop of the day, but it is the first time that McMurray has stopped for tires. He was in for fuel only early on. Now, the reason they have stopped him here is because so many cars stayed out. The paddle man has a stop sign up. They have to wait till all the cars that stayed on the racetrack go by before Boris said, and then all the other cars that pitted can go back out on the racetrack. So he's not really losing any time by being stopped there, but having to restart at the end of the line. Well, that line is 40 cars long. It's a very long line. Is Boris Badenoff good enough to get back to the front? But Stay Boris said. Alongside Larry McReynolds and Daryl Walter, by Mike Joy, Jeff Hammond, and Dick Bergren. On pit road, we have a new leader, as Boris said, has elected to pit under this third caution flag of the day. There's Denny Hamlin, who runs out front of Kevin Harvick, J.J. Yaley, Reed Sorensen, and Kyle Busch. Now it's cycled around to where five Busch Series regulars lead this race. I got a feeling Mr. Harvick is going to try his best to take advantage of Mr. Hamlin early on this restart. I don't believe he can do it. That 20 car is bad to the bone. I think it's a pretty fast hot rod. It could win this race. So Harvick's got his work cut out for him. He can get by him. Green, 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 green. First to the road course ringers. Mark Gosens in seventh, followed by Paul Tracy and Jorge Getters. Harvick dives to the inside, and the 21 car just sucker can't hole. quite get a bite right there. Yeah. That's that sucker hole, Daryl. That's exactly what you want to do, but it's just hard to make that stick. But that's, that's what you want to do. Put that nose in there, make, make uh, Hamlin look over there. He might miss his mark, and uh, he'll run off the racetrack. Joe Gibbs racing first and third, Hamlin and Yaley. Richard Childress racing in second. Chip Ganassi racing in fourth and Hendrick Motorsports fifth. Carlos Pardo, the 34 that was having the tire lockup under braking, 
has gone to the garage. Yeah, he's joined Joel Kaufman, who had the transmission leak. David Green in the 27 car also took his car behind the wall to the garage a few laps ago. Dick Bergeron on our leader. Yeah, I talked to Dave Rogers, the crew chief, Hamlin's uh, crew chief this morning, Mike, and he said that he has such a strong car, he doesn't want to gamble on fuel mileage at all. So then I went to Hamlin and I asked for a guy that's only run a couple of road course races, how come you're so fast? And he told me the reason he's so fast is this is a flat track. And if you look back at his record from 2005, he had the most success at places like Loudoun and Phoenix, flat tracks. And my next question was, how do you think you're going to do today? And in all seriousness, he looked at me and he said, oh, I think we're going to win. We have the best car. Maybe he will. Well, he's backing that up right now, that's for sure. Well, I give him credit for one thing. He does have the fast car. I, I like the way that thing looks. Kyle, Kyle Busch in the five car. And that's the way to make that pass. He had clearance on Reed Sorensen at the early part of the braking zone for turn one. Yeah, and I believe Reed cut him a little slack, too. Reed remembers what happened to him had last year here. He got spun out late in the race, so uh, Reed's got a good car. Oop, put a little block on the, the 33 car. That's uh, Ron Fellows back out there after that ignition. Block. And right now, Ron Fellows is a lap down. He would love to see a caution flag. He wants to get it as early as he can where he can get the free pass back on the lead lap. But just remember, watching Reed Sorensen in the 41 car, Jeff Hammond was talking about it. They do have a vibration with that car. It's not unusual, Larry, on the road course, you'll warp a rotor. Uh, we use your brakes too much, you get them real hot, and then they cool off under one of these cautions, it'll warp up a little bit, and you'll get a little vibration, vibration in your brakes and up to your brake pedal, and it's real confusing as to what it is. Now, Adrian Fernandez crossed the line 31st last time by. In the lows 57, he's back on the lead lap, got the free pass under a prior caution. Hasn't been able to gain a lot of ground since. They have had that car in the pits a couple of times to reset the toe out. But you know, he came on late last uh, in the race here last year and uh, after having some issues. And uh, I wouldn't count Adrian out. He's good on this track and that car is good once they got it. I think they got a patch back up. Good to go now. Whoa, somebody ran through the chicane. Who was that? Uh, I think it may have been a 66 car. Getters, I yeah. think it. I think it was, but now, I think he ran through this. I think he blew the chicane. What NASCAR said in the drivers' meeting, Jamie McMurray raised the question: If you run through the chicane but don't pass anybody, what do you need to do? And David, who's the race director, said you need to slow down and give back the time you gained uh -oh. by shooting the chicane. Uh oh. Trouble. Danger, Will Robinson. Yes, danger, danger. <laughs> Mexican road race, be careful. Johnny Sauter closing on the 10 of John Andretti. It's Michael Waltrip in the 99 car. This is a battle for 11th right here between Michael, who we're riding with, and Whoa. John Andretti in the 10. Whoa, I think he may have cut him off a little bit. Put Andretti up on the curve, and RVs.com for it. And Michael pulling away just a little bit here. Let's go to the leader's pit, Dick. With crew chief Dave Rogers, and he is just about to talk to his driver. You are one of the very first people to pit. When do you pit next? What's your strategy? I didn't, I didn't really hear what you said there, but uh, we're pretty I, wanted, I want to know what your strategy is when you will pit next. Uh, it depends on how the cautions fall. Uh, somewhere between uh, 40 and 45. So you're gonna have to make this then a three-stop race. Uh, no, we're going to try to stretch it again. We're going to gamble a little bit on some cautions late in the race. All right, good luck to you. No, Dick, I definitely think the magic number is lap 45, which is 15 laps ago. That puts you 35 laps from the end of the race. That's pretty much the fuel, fuel window that everybody said they could go. And I think that's the lap we're going to see a lot of cars hitting pit road. Hamlin last pitted at lap six. We've had several cautions since to stretch fuel mileage just a bit. Hey, Mark what, Dawson, is he car. is charging. The Belgian is uh, he is on a tear here. Now, after he made his pit stop, let's look at how he has come up through the field. After uh, lap 12, when he was second, he came out of the pits and moved to 22nd, and 
has climbed back up to fifth. What happened when he was 22nd there, that was basically the lap before he made a green flag stop. He was one of the teams that elected to come on the pit road, not under caution, but under green. A little right rear corner panel damage, not much. Nah, no harm, no foul. It's just Perfect. Touch. Got it tweaked just right. We talked at the top of the show, drivers making their very first NASCAR road course start. Mark is one of those five drivers making his very first Bush Series start here at Mexico. The 27 car of David Green is back out on the racetrack after some repairs and a 66. Remember we said, thought he might have blown the chicane? He did, didn't give back the spot. Got a drive through as he goes down pit lane. 35 miles per hour. Again, that was explain, fully explained at the driver's meeting. If you shoot the chicane and gain a spot, you, a position, you have to give it back before you come back around to start finish, wave the driver by, and Getters apparently did not, so he'll get a drive through. And we need to update Boris said our pole setter in the nine car, he has worked his way back into the top 20 up to the 19th position. Right now, he is about 16 and a half seconds behind our leader, Denny Hamlin, as we've got 49 laps to go in this race, plus one more pit stop for everyone. He passes Chris Cook in the Lausas restaurant, number 56. And he's moving back toward the front. Jason Keller just ahead of him. Denny Hamlin, the Rockwell Automation Chevy, leads all comers here in Mexico City. NASCAR. NASCAR crashes the entertainment capital of the world for the next Cup UAW. Battle for the lead with 33 laps complete in the Telcel Motorola 200 presented by Banamex as Kyle Busch goes after Denny Hamlin. For God. position one. Don't believe it's going to be a battle for long. That five has been coming, Larry. He has been picking them up, laying them down. In fact, we're 33 laps in this race. He ran his fastest lap of the race two laps ago. I say he's going to stick that nose right underneath that uh, 20 car going down into turn one. Michael Waltrip off course. Michelle Jourdain went off just a bit ago. Here I come. Joel Kaufman I returns to the race. Say, give me some room. Nope. Couldn't quite do it in turn one. Caution, the yellow is out. That may be for this man. But it just hit right on the front. Yikes. We might get a radiator in it, I don't know. Michael Waltrip. Rock roll, the old dream machine is in trouble. Looks like a nightmare. What happened here, buddy? Hit the curb, hit the curb. Just the same place that the 59 wrecked uh, now in the qualifying. Have you ever hit a tire wall? Oh, I'll it, tell you about it. <laughs> it tears a car all to pieces. Well, it, and here's uh, Michelle, Michelle Jourdain. Jourdain. Just prior, he is trying to miss Jason Leffler, who had cr climbed the curb and comes back out just about where he was. So no harm, no foul there. Scared but them worse than it did him. A lot of road race courses have used tire walls for a long, long time because they're impact absorbing. But look what they look do that thing. to the right side of the car. Okay, we're going to go to the garage with it. Uh, fuel and tires. They I need to look at TV. It needs more than fuel. <laughs> they it need more than tires. It needs more than a radiator. Yeah, you don't have a fuel cell and you don't have a radiator. <laughs> the, the problem with tire walls as a soft wall is when the nose hits the first part of the tire wall, it sucks the whole car into the tires and uh, damage ensues. Fortunately, not to Michael but definitely to that car. Our producer, Neil Goldberg, passes on that the real dream machine in this case is Ron Fellows, this car, because he will get the free pass. That caution will make his dreams come true. There's a commercial there somewhere. I just oh, know yeah. there is. <laughs> You're watching NASCAR on Fox. This. 35 laps complete in Mexico City. Michael Waltrip's dream machine has had a nightmare courtesy of the tire wall. As he got into it uh, really hard. We're five laps short of halfway. Time now for this week's State Farm Safety Report. Here's Jeff Hammond. Well, M well Mike, when the crews come down as far as pit stops are concerned, you'll notice that all the guys up on the wall are all wearing fire suits. But the most important guys 
in this whole pit crew happen to be the fuel man as well as the catch can man. And their uniforms are a little different than the tire changes and tire carriers. They have complete helmets that cover their face, special covers to go around their necks, gloves. All of their stuff is specially designed in case of a fire to give them an extra opportunity to get away from the race car, get away from this fire in case it does happen. So NASCAR has gone an extra step. As you can see, these guys getting ready to come down pit road one more time. The fire, uh, fire retardant material that they're wearing right now to protect them in the case there is a problem. The fuel man as well as the catch can man. NASCAR safety moving forward. For more information on safety in our sport, log on to foxsports.com. I want to say congratulations to uh, Ken Butler. He's uh, over at Aaron's. He's a grandfather this past week. I want to say happy birthday to Bubba Alexander back in Franklin, Tennessee. I'm sure that he's Ken's probably glad he has that new grandbaby, but I'm not thinking he's going to be real happy about this. Just hit that curb and just loses it just for a second, and there's nowhere to go but right in that tire wall. And I see what happens there, Darrell. The right rear corner of the car catches the tire wall, gets sucked in, and when the tires stop collapsing, it launches the right front around into the rest of the tire wall. That thing is torn up. Yikes. So pit stops under caution. We'll recap those when we come back. Thanks again, Tony. Another great win for Team Chevy. <laughs> Bush Series Racing on Fox, presented by Chevrolet, is sponsored by FedEx. Proud sponsor of Denny Hamlin, the number 11 race team. FedEx, every day is race day. Still under caution here at lap 36 of this 80-lap race. The free pass goes to Ron Fellows, puts him back on the lead lap. The pace car will wave him around when they get the one to go. Indication at turn four, and Adrian Fernandez earlier got the free pass, but uh, Jeff, is he okay? Mike, reports now are that maybe he's not. Adrian had radioed in earlier whenever he was talking to his crew chief, uh, Peter Spinoza, that, uh, that, that hey, my hand is hurting during that crash. I felt like I may have hurt my thumb. Well, now he's called back in and said, guys, I think I've actually broke my thumb. I think I'm going to be okay, but please have a doctor standing by at the end of the race. So this is not very good for Adrian Fernandez. Jeff, a lot of road racers like to hook their thumb over that steering wheel spoke, and when you get a jolt, it's real easy to get a hand or wrist injury. Yeah, we saw that earlier with Ron Fellows, how he was hooking his fingers around the spoke and the steering wheel, and uh, that could be the way Adrian is driving as well. Those IndyCar guys have a tendency to drive that way, holding the steering wheel at uh, three and nine. Now, here's the note we need to make. With about eight to nine laps before that window we've been talking about, which would be 45 laps to go, is, is or 35 laps to go, basically at lap 45, what we had, including Ron Fellows, that got back on the lead lap, we had about 12 cars that pitted. The only car that was really up in the top 12 or 15 that pitted, I think, is John Andretti in the 10 car. Their strategy could be banking on enough cautions. It's about two to one ratio, cautions to green, that they may not have to make another pit stop with that 10 car. Wow. All right, Dick Bergeron is in the pit of the third place car. And that would be Kevin Harvick, and the guy who knows what they're going to do is Richard Childress because he owns the car. Now tell me the truth, because all America, all Mexico is listening. What are you guys going to do? When are you going to pit? Um, probably four, five, six, seven, eight, lap, nine, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> all right, you want to go closer to eight or you want to go closer to four? Uh, kind of in the middle, maybe. <laughs> Yeah, what it is, you got that last window that you're trying to get into, and uh, that's what everybody's trying to do. There might be one or two cars that may pit right when they give the green, to, you know, so we'll just see how it comes. Are you trying to be the first guy to make that last pit stop, Richard? Yeah, that's what everybody tries to do. All right, everybody's on the same program. Jeff? Mike, down here in the 41 car pit, uh, again, a Reed Sorensen, they're doing the same thing. They're watching and counting laps. They would like to get closer to lap 40, 44 to 45. But also, the two car, which is a Richard Childress car, is, say, is thinking the same thing. Everybody down here that stayed out early on or made that early pit stop, they feel like they're kind of like playing a game of chess. And whoever hits pit road first, it's going to be real important that the spotters let the crew chiefs know they're coming down pit road. So be ready for a rash of pit stops around lap 44 or even when they drop the green on this next restart. 
Now, let's update you on our, our pole sitter, Boris said. Remember, he was the last car to pit. He pitted back on lap 25, which was only about 12 laps ago. Now, he's made his way up to the 13th position. It appeared he was going to be on the agenda of going 27, 27, and 27 laps. But, Daryl, I would just have to call an audible on that. If I'm getting to that window that we've all been talking about, Richard Childress was talking about, come to pit road under green. Don't get burnt by that caution again. The magic number is 45. So come on 45, because I think it's going to get real busy down here on lap 45. More than likely. And, and cautions will probably get real busy about lap 70 to 80. So there is said in 13th place, right behind him is Carl Edwards, who had a very eventful weekend here last year in Mexico with a hard crash into the wall at the front stretch chicane. Carl told me he wasn't real happy with his car and they made wholesale change on, on it this morning. And uh, well, actually before they qualified it because it was the impound race. And uh, he said that he didn't know what he had. He really was uh, shooting in the dark. And Larry, doesn't he have his cup crew chief here this weekend? Yeah, he's working with Bob Osborne. You know, of course, they work together on the next Dell Cup side, but they've not been used to working together on the Bush Series because his regular Bush Series crew chief, Pierre Curtail, who is from Canada, had some passport issues. They could not get worked out in time enough to come down here. So Bob Osborne was good enough to come down here on his off weekend. Two laps to halfway. Coming up next weekend from Las Vegas, Nextel Cup qualifying on speed on Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. On Saturday, Bush Series qualifying on speed at 4.30, and then we switch over to FX for Nextel Cup practice and the Bush Series race. NASCAR race day, green flag edition on speed, ahead of the Las Vegas 400 on Fox. That's next weekend from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Here's a guy that's uh, trying to catch up to the back of the field and he's gonna have a pretty good shot at doing it. Ron Fellows, he got the uh, lucky dog. He's coming around, he's gonna be in 33rd spot in car 33, but uh, he's gonna be real, real close to being here for the restart. He got a good jump on him. They sent him a little earlier than they did uh, the 57 car. Denny Hamlin, uh, Kyle ready. Busch, Kevin Harvick, J.J. Yaley, Green, green, green. Four series regulars, then Mark Gosens, Reed Sorensen, John Wood, and Paul Tracy. For the lead, Kyle Busch looking outside this time. That's the fast way around. Hamlin doesn't give him a lot of room, though. But he'll be set up for turn two here because now he's on the inside. But now they're side by side in the tightest part of the racetrack. And Hamlin was set up for turn three, but too tight. Couldn't hold the car. Who will beat up to turn four? Well, look at the guy moving in the picture as well. Kevin Harvick in the 21 car. He says, you guys go ahead and run side by side. I'll get there with you. Harvick's pretty good on the restarts here. He was earlier, but uh, the five car was been, been the fastest car of this group. So he made the pass and he'll pull away. Playing with the throttle, you can hear him. It's uh, hard to get power down once you've been on those tires for a while, so you got to really work. And a lot of these cars now have been on these these tires for almost 20 laps, so they're really starting to slide around. And Fellows has caught the back of the field. He was the free pass car, and he's now on the lead lap, having a chance at a good top 10 finish here. Back in 33rd position, about 17 and a half seconds behind our leader uh, right now, Kyle Busch in the five. Five cars got it together now, Larry. I mean, he's been fast, ran his fastest laps there a little bit ago, and uh, right now he's the fastest car, pulling away from everybody else. That car looks really good. But I just believe when it's all said and done, I think who wins and loses this race is going to come down to this final pit stop, not making a mistake on pit road, not getting caught speeding, and making it at the right time. Menard jumped inside a Boyer going into turn number one. Oh, that oh, didn't work oh, too well. Whole oh, gaggle of them. But get, look who came out in that uh, deal right there, the nine car. I think. And John Wood. But that was Clint Boyer in the two car who last time around was running in the ninth position that went around. Paul Menard had jumped to the inside of Boyer entering turn one. And Boyer ended up, it looks like, off course. It's so tempting going down into turn one, stick that nose under the guy and run through there side by side. But boy, you better be trusting the guy beside of you. Well, give uh, Kyle Bush and Denny Hamlin a lot of credit for pulling it off the right way. 
Here's what happened the wrong way as Boyer got spun. Menard and 11 just getting by. You see a lot of cars going off the racetrack. Clint Boyer, very lucky someone didn't get into him. Yeah, now, it might, might be a judgment call on John Wood and the nine of Boris said whether or not they'd have to give that spot back. Well, I think in this situation here, I, I don't think you'd have to worry about that, Mike. This is a this off course because you were forced off. Okay. People spinning. I don't think there's any issue with that. And NASCAR agrees, Darrell. No foul. If you did that intentionally, now it might be a whole different story, but we are halfway in Mexico City. Kyle Bush out in front of Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, JJ Yaley, and Mark Gosen. Congratulations to Scott Pruitt and Luis Diaz, who drove their Lexus Riley to victory in yesterday's 250 mile Rolex Grand Am sports car race. York Bergmeister and Colin Brown finished second. Paul Tracy, who's in today's race, running seventh, finished third with Mike Borkowski, his co driver. And what we saw right there was Jason Radcliffe, the crew chief for J.J. Yaley, the, the 18 team, talking to his pit crew about when they're going to make this pit stop, and I'm sure giving them the pep talk about no mistakes. They're in fourth place right now. Those two cars of the Gibbs is the 18 and the 20. Both have been really, really, you know, just solid all day long. Been right up there in the top five or six. Doing a good job. Here's Ron Fellows. He's passed Aaron Fike. He's up to 32nd, right behind uh, Danny O'Quinn and Michelle Jourdain. Uh, this is Jourdain just ahead of Fellows. I think Ron probably feels like this joint owes him a little something. Last year he got spun around about five different times. So now he's just got to take his time, work through some of these back cars here, and uh, he's going to get a good finish. Yeah, he's going to have to be patiently aggressive, though. With, we're at the halfway point of this race, and right now he's 20 seconds behind our leader. He's got a look inside Jordan entering seven, trying to get a good launch off turn eight. He told us yesterday, if you can get a good launch right here, you can pass him high or low. You can get that run down this long straightaway. Uh, this straightaway goes forever. <laughs> I love watching Snake through. Oh, there's somebody that blew the chicane. The 3M car. You know who that is? Todd Cleaver. Cleaver, yeah, but I think he gave back the spot if there was one to give back. Was he racing with the 25, Larry? Right now, yeah, they're racing for the 23rd position. Okay, Todd so Cleaver in the 06 and Ashton Lewis Jr. in the 25. He's slowing down and he gave the spot back, so I think he's okay. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch ahead. These are the first two cars. And Kyle Busch has opened it up. Yeah, you can hear uh, Hamlin now. He's uh, he's used up his tires, Larry. He's going to be ready for a pit stop here pretty quick. Mark McFarland is off course for the second time. And you know what? We're getting to that window that we keep talking about. And if I'm if I'm a crew chief, I'm telling my three spotters, if you see anything about to happen on this racetrack, let me know. Let's try to get on pit road before that caution comes out. Then everyone behind us would have to pit under the caution. We'd get the track position. The rule is the rule that Adrian Fernandez got caught on last year. If you're on pit road past the commitment cone before the caution comes out, you may complete your stop. Now, very well, David Rogers, Denny Hamlin's crew chief, may have got the message that Mark McFarlane was off the racetrack. He's hit pit road, which would anticipate his final pit stop. This should be four tires and mainly fuel, Jeff Hammond. That's right, trying to get the fuel in. They're also going to make a little bit of a track bar adjustment. Not quite happy with the car. They actually brought the track bar up just a little bit. Four tires. David Rogers made sure to tell him, make sure you don't speed down pit road. That's very important. Don't get caught coming in or going out and packing that fuel in at the end of the race. And he's out, got, gone, guys. Carl Edwards is also in on this lap, and we expect Kyle Busch next time by. I think that 20 car, Larry, just he needed that pit stop. He is starting to fall back a little bit, sliding around. He needed tires. But he needed to at least get to where he was in his window. Dick? Carl Edwards right now is on pit road, Mike, and they are jacking the right side of the car and holding it up in the air. Reason, boy, he almost stalled it. Reason being to pack every possible drop of fuel in it. Now, he surely is one of the first to pit last, so this may be an advantage to Edwards if his fuel doesn't run out. Is it too early? Well, we're 38 laps to go. The guys based their fuel mileage off of practice. And right now, Daryl, the race pace is much slower than practice, so you're probably not using as much fuel. The other thing that you got to consider too, Larry, is the altitude. Uh, these engine tuners 
have really worked hard to get fuel mileage, but uh, it's a little different here than it is back home where the altitude is uh, not so high. Kevin Harvick and J.J. Yaley both pit here at lap 43. Kyle Busch stayed out. Jorge Getters is on pit road. Well, this is asking a lot right here to make it to the end. Uh, you're going to have to have some help. Jeff? Well, Kevin Harvick writes his Richard Childers, number 21, down pit road. Also, trying to pack this thing full of fuel. They feel like if they can get it full of fuel, Kevin can baby the tires the rest of the way. Really good. The car was good. Right about that time, the left rear tire changer falls down. A little bit slow on the right, on the left front also, but right front, that is. Car is now fueling. He's down and away. Clint Boyer is in as well on this stop. Adrian Fernandez in the pit lane. As you see, uh, service completed on J.J. Yaley's car. And again, these are all scheduled pit stops. Here's Jorge Getters in the 66 car. This We anticipate this will be these car's final pit stop of the day. Aaron Fike is also in. Now, will we see Kyle Busch this time? Just about got to. I mean, now he's the last of the guys that pitted first. That could hurt him for track position later on. Well, he don't want the same thing to happen to him that, that happened to Boris Said, who's back in the fifth position in the nine car pro sitter. And there he comes. Pit road, four tires in fuel. Got to be down to 35 miles per hour right there. You can't make a mistake. A mistake on this stop here, you can pretty much color your day gone. Now, if you're Paul Tracy, Boris Said, Reed Sorensen, do you come now? Oh, I, nope. I think if I was Boris, I'd come on in. I mean, he can't. The strategy he laid out is not going to work for him because of the way cautions fell. They all stayed out, Dick. Yeah, I did. Chad Walter talking to Kyle Busch has told him that he is crazy fast. The crew going to have to make this an error-free pit stop. They've got the windshield covering off it. Fuel will be the most important issue. A bit surprised he was not among the very first to pit, but Walter's decision was to pit now so he'd have at least slightly fresher tires toward the end of the race. So far, a flawless pit stop. He's gone. And I think the other thing, Larry, is you're buying a little insurance here coming a little later with fuel because uh, it's going to be close. Paul Tracy completes his stop in the Geico Dodge. Jason Leffler is in, and so is Ashton Lewis Jr. Mark McFarland makes what he hopes will be his final stop of the day. Excuse me, it's Regan Smith, not Ashton Lewis. There's a new leader right there, the Goose. Mark Gosen. from The Belgium. Goose is loose. But the Goose better get to Pit Road pretty shortly. Don't want to hurt the old goose. Might lay a golden egg for the day's over with. 36 laps and several more puns yet to go here in Mexico <laughs> City. You're watching the NASCAR Bush Series. Well, well it is fun. Oscar night, you know. <laughs> what are you waiting for? A written invitation to participate in life? Well, you have one. Bush Series Racing on Fox, presented by Chevrolet, is sponsored by Q, the heat activated oil that helps maximize power. By Prilosec OTC, proud sponsor of NASCAR. By Sprint, proud partner of the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series. And by Team Chevy in the 303 horsepower Monte Carlo SS. Jeff Hammond, we got all types of problems, I think, on Mark Gosen's pit stop here in the 90 car. Yes, we do, Larry. As he came in, he almost overshot his pitch, but then they didn't get the tire on the right side up off the ground enough. And what happened was when they dropped the jack, he wasn't, Jack Man wasn't paying attention. The right rear was not on, and he started to drive away. But fortunately, they were able to fix it after they had to go back across the wall and get another jack. Big time trouble in the 90 car after having a great day. Well, we saw that happen to Getters here last year had had a great car and then ended up having problems in the pits. That's one of the hardest things I believe these guys have to adjust to is making these kind of pit stops. Green flag pit stops. One lap ago, John Wood came in along with Bernie Lamar and Reed Sorensen. And Boris said takes over the lead for the second time today. Ahead of Paul Menard and now said will pit at lap 47. This is going to work out OK for him. The Ingersoll ran Dodge of Ray Evernham is pitted all the way down toward turn one where Dick Bergeron awaits. And Boris's crew chief, Trip Bruce, has reminded him pit far enough away from the wall so there's plenty of room for the jack and plenty of room for the gas man as well. They are going to return to this car to the exact same chassis configuration that said began the race with it. The only change they've made so far is a half a pound of air in the left rear. They're returning to where they originally were there. This is a two-year-old car. Boris has helped design the brake system on it. See 
He's been working pretty well. The gas man not. It's okay. He's out of here. 15-2. Nice stop. Nice stop. John Andretti and Johnny Sauter also stop on this lap along with Jason Keller and Rogelio Lopez. So here's our new leader, Paul Menard. Uh, second year in the Bush Series. An awful lot of experience in road racing and open wheel cars coming in here. So we'd almost have to call Menard a road course ringer as well. Yeah, I believe so. He's got a pretty good, pretty nice credentials, but he's getting ready. To, looks like he might be getting ready to hit. I'll tell you what, another car having a nice run here. Carlos Contreras started back in the 20th position, sitting up there in the second spot right now in the 14 car. Looks like he's going to go ahead and run another lap and he'll lead the race here. And you know what? The grandstands love this. One of their drivers leading this race with 32 laps to go. So Menard stops at lap 48. And it's Contreras' number who goes up on the board as the sixth lead change of the day. Dick? Well, Menard is pitting late, so he's going to have fresher tires than everybody else. And if tires really matter, he has got an advantage. We'll see if the other guys run out of fuel. That's the other issue. Menard left front corner, however, is damaged. Crew member trying to pull that fender out a little bit. Just a little bit slow on the left side of the car. Menard, one of the great road racing veterans despite his youth. He's won in the Elite Series. 16.7 stop for Menard, not the best. Ron Fellows is in. Fellows back up and on the lead lap in the Kevin Harvick. Chevrolet makes his final stop here at lap 47. AJ Ford to fourth on pit road in the 38 car. We've almost cycled through this set of green flag stops. We have about six cars that have not pitted yet. Carlos Contreras, Ashton Lewis Jr., uh, Michelle Jordan Jr., Todd Cleaver, and Danny O'Quinn Jr. Now the Roush strategy is interesting, leaving both their rookies out on the track. Uh-oh, Joel Kaufman, who went to the garage with transmission trouble, then came back out on the racetrack. He is running 13 laps down, and he'll get going again. He's waiting for a break in traffic. Nope, yellow is out. The Caution is, is out. out. Now, that is not the caution that these four or five guys that have not pitted yet that they wanted to see, because now they will have to make a stop, and they're going to start at the tail end of our 32 cars that are on the lead lap. I think it's pretty good news for most everybody. A few guys it's not good news for, though, the ones that are uh, still out. They haven't made their pit stop yet. You know who I think really likes this, this caution right here? Finally, he's overcome, I think, the strategy in the beginning. Obor said. Yeah, I'm agreeing. Number 12, Joel Kaufman goes around. And that puts us under the caution flag for the fifth time today. We are five-eighths of the way here in Mexico City. Here's our Pizza Hut race summary. Six lead changes. We've had five different leaders. Boris said has led twice. Average hey, green hey. speed, 96, excuse me. What's this five-eighths stuff? Well, five, 50 out of 80, that's five-eighths. Five-eighths. Convert it to kilometers, and I'll, I'll fill you in later. Oh, man. Don't start all that. Uh, I think the rest of that said we've had five caution flags. This is the fifth right now at lap 50. And here is how the Mexican drivers are running. Carlos Pardo is in the garage, as is Jimmy Morales. Rogelio Lopez, Patrick Getters, well back. Jorge Getters, after that, uh, uh, he's in 20th after a change of pit strategy there. This has come back from being a lap down to run 17. Carlos Contreras, out front. Five eights. Yeah, you know. Fifty-one of eighty laps complete. This is a Visa race break. It has been a busy day in Mexico City. Stacy Compton got the party started early, lap five, losing an engine. That was the first of five caution flags. Jamie McMurray came out of the chicane and into the wall and came cross court to collect Adrian Fernandez. Ron Fellows had this view of Paul Menard and J.J. Yaley's get-together, and Michael Waltrip gets sucked in by the tire wall. Clint Boyer goes around. Everybody scatters. And then Joel Kaufman goes for a spin. Five caution flags so far. Jeff? 
Well, just before the caution came out, Carlos Contreras, hometown favorite right there, was leading the race, but they had to make a uh, pit stop. And when they came down pit road, Carlos asked, hey, guys, how's this going to affect us? And they told him real quick, you're not going to like it, but at least going to have four fresh tires to charge your way back up through the, to the front. So uh, look for this uh, 14 car to be coming to the front, guys. There are still 33 cars on the lead lap, four more laps down. This has been a Visa race break. Whatever life takes, life takes Visa. Now we need to update our top three right now. Michelle Jordan Jr. in the 15 car, Todd Cleaver in the 06, and Danny O'Quinn Jr. in the 50. These three cars pitted back on the caution at lap 36. Now, that's 44 laps to go. That's about nine laps strong than we think they can go. We didn't restart that caution until 42 to go, and we have now had about three or four cautions under this caution period very well. I don't think it'll be a race winning move because if you look back there, the car in fourth is Kyle Busch in the five, but it could buy those guys a good solid finish more so than they would have had if they had just stayed on the same strategy as everyone else. Yeah, you had to plan on these late cautions. Some of these guys did to make it and it's working out for them. Hey, you know, we're in Mexico today. Mexico is going to be in uh, Phoenix playing in the United States in the uh, World Baseball Classic on Tuesday. So they're coming over to USA next week. Getting set for the green, three drivers whose teams may have elected a one-stop strategy. Out in front, there are three Fords, Jordan, Cleaver, and O'Quinn, the two rookies, then three Chevys, Bush, Hamlin, and Harvick, the Dodge of Boris Seth, you ready? the Chevy of Yale, the Ford of Green, 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 Chevy of Lamar as we restart. By the way, boogity, boogity, boogity is an international phrase. It's the same everywhere you go, so that's why boogity, boogity, boogity. All these people knew exactly what you're talking about. Well, I know who's boogity, boogity, boogity in right now. Kyle Busch in that five car. He's already taken the third position away, and now he pulls to the inside of Todd Cleaver in the 06 to take the second position away. And don't forget about that 20 car, Denny Hamlin, right there. We know he's had a fast race car back in the top five. But now he's side by side with Harvick. As Harvick battles for second, and Hamlin took the line away. Harvick right, be right behind Denny Hamlin in the 21. I'll tell you, that 20 car is fast. I don't know if he's a match for the five. They look awfully good, both of them do, but if he can get up there to him, that'd be a great finish, great race. But Mike, you mentioned him. Look at that nine car, Boris Set, our pole Woo! sitter. He's now trying to move back in the top five, and we know how fast of a car he has, and it's almost like his car does not give up on long runs. Oh, he's going to unleash that bad boy here now that he can make it to the end. Watch Ron Fellows on this restart. That's Jason Keller just ahead. Green, 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 green. Whoa, who hooked him. And uh, Jason said, hello there, uh, Mr. Fellows. He kept on digging. Two, two in the grass, two in the pavement. Back in 22nd spot. Whoa. One more two liter spin. No, it's Jordan. Yeah, Jordan and Kyle Bush. Racing for the lead. Shot down, shot the down. caution is out. Andretti spins. It may be more because it's smoke. You can't see. Boyer spins. Kyle got going. Kyle Bush. I don't think he lost very many spots. And I think when it was all said and done and the smoke had cleared, Denny Hamlin in the 20 car possibly had the lead of the race as he made it through the smoke. That was a wow. move right there is what I would call beating yourself because that five car was definitely fast enough to win this race. I know he got going again, uh, but he lost several spots. Plus, he gave it up to two good cars there, the 20 car of Hamlin and the nine car of Sid. You know, that looked a lot like the incident in yesterday's Grand <laughs> Am race, where two drivers battling for position got together in the same place and ended up in the fence. But you're right. As we look at his crew chief, Chad Walter, Kyle Busch's crew chief, he knew he had much fresher tires than Jordan did in the 15 car. It was only going to be a matter of time. Whoa, young man. Whoa, slow. Take your time. Now NASCAR will take the moment of caution and go back to where each car was at the last time it passed a scoring loop. He's all the way down. Kyle Busch is all the way down in the five car in the entrance to pit lane. So he's on the very bottom. There just wasn't enough room there. He grabs a gear and goes. Fortunately, he's, no, fortunately for him, he spun all the way around. So he spins it all the way around. They were far enough ahead of the rest of the pack. Boy, Morris. Morris said in the nine just barely gets by. The smoke cleared just in the nick of time. Ron Fellows looking back. There's Boyer going on around with the contact with the McDonald's car. Caution's out, caution's out. We don't race to the caution. The, actually, the positions 
are decided before the caution actually waves based on where you're running at the moment. The loop you pass before the caution comes out. Well, based on where we're running at the moment, I don't think spinning out the 15 car was a good idea. <laughs> I know he didn't do it on purpose. You mean but where we are at the moment being <laughs> Mexico, Mexico City? Yes. <laughs> Michelle Jordan is okay. You're right, Larry. That's a tough way to lose the lead. It, it's hard to tell from the camera angle. Was he squeezing Kyle Busch down the racetrack or did could Bush have had enough room for his race car? Didn't appear there was much room left there. And we talked about it at the top of the show. That part of the racetrack, it's like running into a funnel almost. It just gets narrower and narrower coming off that corner. The end of the day for Michelle Jourdain, 27 laps too soon. <laughs> Here's the team. Carl went back and had a look at the running order on the last scoring loop. There are several around this road course. The last loop passed by each driver. We'll get to that in a second. Here's our Allstate's Good Hands driver, Allstate, official insurance partner of NASCAR. After this contact, Kyle Busch needed some good hands to spin that car back the right way around and get going. But watch Boris said he's the man with the hands as he threads his way through here and just misses Kyle Busch. Now, Kyle Busch is not in terrible shape. He's, uh, what is he, six there, Larry? But he didn't help his tires any by doing all that spinning and, uh, and sliding. So uh, he probably used those up a little bit. Got a little damage on the left front. So here's how we stand. Todd Cleaver, the rookie in the Roush Ford, is the race leader. Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick in Chevrolet, second and third. Morris said, holds up for fourth. J.J. Yaley is scored in fifth. And Kyle Busch is inserted where he comes back running after that spin. Doesn't have to go all the way to the back, even though he was involved in bringing out the caution. He got going in sixth spot. Rookie Bernie Lamar, Paul Menard, Danny O'Quinn Jr., and Johnny Sauter. And, and just to update you on Todd Cleaver, he, he is on a loader tires in most of these cars. He was on pit road back on lap 36. But the thing about it, with all these cautions we've had of late, this should buy him enough fuel to make it to the end. So I've got to believe they do not plan on pitting that 06 car here with about 25 laps to go. Yeah, I believe everybody's home free now, Larry. With all these cautions, that's what they were banking on. Now it looks like scoring will update. Again, they have rechecked the scoring loops and where everyone was running. And number 20, Denny Hamblin, is scored as the leader. And there may be some other adjustments in the lineup. Uh, when they come by. Michelle Jourdain, you saw him walk to the ambulance. He was okay. He wanted to wait until the field came by, but they ushered him into the ambulance. His car has gone off on the rollback, and he is out of the race. Joining Morales, Michael Waltrip, Randy LaJoy, Carlo Pardo, and Stacy Compton. And just to update you also on Todd Cleaver, remember at the top of the show, we talked about not a lot of experience. Todd Cleaver has never been on a road course before. And in fact, how he got a lot of experience road course racing is they built a two-seater car and went to Virginia International Raceway with Boris Said, and they swapped back and forth between the passenger seat and the driver's seat. Now, Kyle Busch in the five, I think he knows those tires are probably in trouble. He hits pit road for four tires and uh, full of fuel to go to the end. But he will restart this race back in about 33rd, 32nd position because that's uh, that's how many cars we've got on the lead lap. How about it, Dick Bergen? Well, shortly after he spun out, Kyle Busch got on the radio and said, I'm sorry, I should not have done that. Uh, they had a long talk about whether it was a good idea to pit or not. They are concerned about damage to the left front fender, which currently is being pulled out. They've got that left front fender squared away now. Meanwhile, the Mexican fans on both sides of the grandstand, both sides of the pits, are expressing their extreme displeasure at Kyle Busch, who said just moments ago on the radio, I bet I'm hated in Mexico. You got that one right. Michelle Jourdain was trying to crowd him down to the bottom of the racetrack. There's no question he did not leave Kyle Busch a lot of room. But Kyle saying that well, he probably forced the issue trying to get under Jourdain for the lead. Well, he took a winning car and has relegated himself to the rear of the field. 
Yeah, it's going to be a <laughs> tall order with 25 laps to go, but I'm going to tell you something that I believe these fans are going to have a lot to cheer for here shortly. We've been following all the problems that Adrian Fernandez in the 57 car has been having. We are riding with him. These guys, they've made several pit stops. They've reset the toe on the car. He has spun out one time. He has made his way almost back to the top 10 in 12th position. Mexican fans are going to get a chance to stand up and cheer because Kyle Busch has just been gigged for too fast entering pit road. Which will put him at the back of the field, which he will be at the back of the field by yeah. virtue of the pit stop. Well, okay. You Does he have you, to do a pass through? No, because it happened under, under caution, caution, correct? Actually, no. it'll be tailing the longest line, so he's really going to have to restart back there about, because it's single file restart, he'll have to restart back in about 38. So, uh, you know what you say when that happens? 10-4, <laughs> message received. But he, he definitely, I think, had the car to beat here today based on what we've watched these last 15, 20 laps. The 20 and the, the, 20 and the 5 were the two at the class of field. Now, we don't know about Boris because he's been kind of working his way back up there. We'll see what he's got. And Paul Tracy has gotten into the back of somebody, which has kind of halted his forward progress at 13th place. And I've got to believe that had to happen over in turn seven and eight yeah. as these cars were stacking up yeah. when, when uh, Kyle Busch and Michelle Jordan got together. Yeah, if you look at the back of, uh, of uh, Adrian's car, it's all stoved up in the back. Uh, so you look at the front of the four car, Paul Tracy, his is all stoved down in the front. So I'd say that's they where match. they come together. You take a big rounded, sweeping, slightly banked, blind entry corner, and you fill it with smoke. Yeah, hello. There's the results. Hello. <laughs> Paul Tracy in the four car, sitting up there in the 13th position, as we've got about, gonna have 24 laps to go. The old gecko's voice went up a notch, I think. Getting set for a restart. It'll be 24 laps to go when they come back around. And the 67 was the free pass car. That is Rogelio Lopez. So he'll get to come around and put himself back on the lead lap. Well, it's getting down to showtime. And we've got a race to finish. <laughs> Denny Hamlin out front of rookie Todd Cleaver in the 3M Ford. Kevin Harvick, runner up here last year, will he go to victory lane? Boris said the road race ace in the Dodge. JJ Yaley, Bernie Lamar, Paul Menard, Danny O'Quinn, Reed Sorensen, the top 10. I think it's going to really be a matter of how long it takes Boris to get to Hamlin and then if he has enough left to get around Hamlin. inside or the uh, outside there wide open and uh, Kevin Harvey jumped all over 21 car definitely filled it and there comes Boris said that nine car he wants that third position away from Cleaver as well that was a real rookie mistake right there to, to give up that spot said to the inside on Cleaver Darrell was it a mistake or was it a move to let the car on faster tires not have to fight him into turn one uh, I don't know if a rookie can think about all that at one time or not, but that would make a lot of sense. <laughs> if it was, it was a good move. We'll give him benefit of the doubt. Okay. Yaley to the inside of Cleaver, who is on Warren Tires. Here's Jeff Hammond. Here with Michelle Jourdain. Uh, awesome run, my friend. You want to tell us what happened? Yes, it's very unfortunate. We had to make an extra pit stop early on because we were missing, we were losing water. But after that, we were running okay, and we we could make it until the end. We were waiting for that yellow, and it came to us. and. You know, there was like still 20 some laps to go, you know, I don't know what, what Kyle was thinking because, I mean, he hurt himself, as, I mean, not as much as myself, but I mean, I don't know what, what some, sometimes what these guys do, you know, or think. Guys, I think pretty much, uh, his voice kind of sums up his feelings right now. Very disappointed after leading this race, 20 some laps to go to get taken out. Taken out well. Well, you get one, you know, that we have one race a year here. This is in front of your home country people. You want to win this race for your pride, for your people, and get taken out. I'm sure emotionally he's very, very upset. Tell you what, Todd Cleaver in the 06 <laughs> yeah. car, he is losing no. a lot of positions right now. He's got more problems than the restart there. Yes, he does. 
Adrian Fernandez looking in. Johnny Sauter's already made the pass on Cleaver. Cleaver's mission, complete all the laps, stay on course, finish the race unscathed. And uh, that's hard to do when everybody around you has got fresh tires. But I'm sure that was the agenda in that stop that they made and, and that strategy. It was not a race winning move. Nope. It was just to try to come up with a good finish. But I'm telling you, he's got his hands full right now. Carl to the inside. Uh, Paul Tracy trying for three wide. Yes, he is. It'll work right here, but not for long. Somebody's going to have to give this his chicken right here. Smoke came. We're getting a lot of smoke from Paul Tracy in that four car. I think it's the left front fender that's rubbing on that race car. I think it's all the fenders. <laughs> He's raced them right to the ground. Not giving up, though. Tracking Carl Edwards through the S's. And uh, Jorge Getter's closing in the 66. Getting desperate back in here now, guys. Everybody knows they got to get what they can. Second place, Boris said, that's Kevin Harvick in blue. This is not what Denny Hamlin's wanting to see here with 22 laps to go because he knows that nine car was the class of the field at the beginning of the race. Now, that was a nice, clean pass into turn seven. That's how you do it. But you know what? Kevin Harvick knew that Boris said was much, that much faster than him. Why well, sit there and waste time and lose time possibly where J.J. Yaley in the 18 catches both of you? Smart move for both drivers. In Tracy is, he's putting up a smoke screen. I don't know if anybody can pass him or not. They can't see him. Yeah, top of your screen, that can't last. That's too bad. He was having a great run, doing a good job. But uh, I think his day's going to come to an end here very, very soon. Paul Tracy has been black flagged. It means he has to come to pit road and make repairs. Where is Kyle Busch? Way back here in 27th place. Trying to gain some ground after having to restart at the tail end of the field. For being too fast entering the pits. And yeah, right now he's almost 20 seconds behind our leader, Denny Hamlin, in the 20 car. Now plus what, a lot of cars. What Hamlin needs to do right now is just cool out until Boris catches him. Boris is going to catch him, but he needs to save a little bit so that he'll be able to hold Boris off once he gets there. He's not going to get away from him, so he might as well save a little something and, and have something left for a fight. And focus out the windshield, not in that rearview mirror. When you're looking back, you're losing time. That's exactly right. Hit your marks. Last time by, Morris said, was 2.7 seconds behind Hamlin. And that no was question. when he made the pass on Harvick. Yeah, no question he's gaining on him. Uh-oh. Kevin Harvick, we're told, He's going to get black flagged, and we'll have a look at why here in a minute as the leaders come through. Harvick right now is the third place car. That's to JJ Yaley in the 18 behind him in fourth place right now. Gibbs boys ought to feel pretty good about themselves today. You got one leading and one running uh, fourth there right now. Uh, that's a pretty good job for those guys coming down here. Both those drivers have had great starts to the season, both in the Bush Series and in Nextel Cup. Yeah, just remember Kevin Harvick, he is our points leader, and he is racing for the championship. He'll be running all the races this year. And let's show you why Harvick will receive the black flag next time around. That's his blue car. So coming. That, that's the restart that I was referring to. And did he make the pass on Todd Cleaver? He, he gained overlap on Todd Cleaver. But did it happen before the green flag waved on the restart? That's the question. It, it would appear to be a clean pass, but. And we can't see both the cars and the timing of the green flag. NASCAR had judged that when the green flag waved, and you know, Harvick was out of, got out of line, coming to the line, the making only, the pass. The only thing it could have been, because that's a clean pass, is that he went too soon. But this 06 was, uh, Cleaver was leaving the whole uh, outside open. But even so, remember what we saw a couple years ago at Texas? No, I, I, I wiped that totally I out of my mind. I, I know, Daryl, but <laughs> no, being right. in the act of passing on the restart before you cross that line will get you a penalty. Now, passing to the outside, that's where you've got to go. But even if the car in front of you have has trouble, you're not supposed to make that make that pass before he, crossing the line. Yeah, you? you cannot pass to the left-hand side. And so he was out of line and committing to the pass and went ahead and completed the pass. If he hadn't followed through with that pass, they may have not black flagged. So which side can you pass on? Well, on a road course, 
Should ball pass yeah, to the outside, to the, the left. Outside. We're, get, we're getting a ruling yeah. on that right now. I'm very and, confused. And so is Richard Childress, the car owner for Kevin Harvick. In the driver's meeting on this track, you... We got a cop. We're going to do a pass through this time. We got to do a pass through this time. You cannot pass. Shit, this time, tell him, Jake. Shit. And they said that at the driver's meeting, and the outside in the case of here would be the left side. Mm -hmm. If he had not continued on through that pass, he probably would have been okay. I think it's, you know, normally we, on an oval track, you can pass, and uh, here I guess we can. Whoa, well, Reed Sorensen is a flame. But now remember, this car had a vibration earlier very well. I think possibly the engine has expired on this 41 Reed Sorensen's car. Copy that blow up, Ron. This would be the four, just time to stay off the groove. This would be the second engine that they have lost. You see all the fluid uh, put up. down. Caution is out. Stuff picked up, guys. Sorensen made an engine change and started this race at the rear and of the 21 field. And 21 is on Kevin Harvick's on pit road. Look well, it. either way, he was going to be at the back of the field. Either way, if it, had he have not pitted now and waited till the caution come out, so either way, he's going to be at the back. Well, he does his pass through, and that means he will restart apparently 32nd when we go back to green. But I still believe this caution would be a break for him because now he's going to be at the very back of the field instead of all the time he would have lost for the pass through under green. Plus, I believe this will help Denny Hamlin, our leader. Less laps on his tires, and uh, and I think it's going to give him a chance to cool out here, and he and Borsch are going to have a whale of a battle. Yeah, that thing just, that thing exploded. Sorensen grenaded right in front of Johnny Sauter. Had to make a big move to miss the discount tire dodge. In the engine problem they had on Friday, Brian Patty, his crew chief, told me it was a very huge explosion. That's the reason they had to go to the rear of the field at the start of the race. Catastrophic. Paul Menard running in. Uh, 18 place. when you come by this time, we 18 left. Fellow with a lot of road course experience. Not so much in the NASCAR Bush Series, but he's giving a good account of himself. So let me. In Mexico City, uh, the caution is out for Reed Sorensen's blown engine. And NASCAR has reviewed the penalty to Kevin Harvick. On an oval track, on restarts, once the green flag waves, all passing must be to the right before you get to the start-finish line. In the driver's meeting, these drivers were told all passing must be to the left before you reach the start-finish line. Richard Childress appealed the penalty. NASCAR took it under further review, and they determined that at the moment the green flag waved, Kevin Harvick was not yet in the act of passing. It's a legal pass. Harvick will get his position back. Well, I'm, I'm, I applaud NASCAR because uh, I did. I was confused at how that was, how they uh, assessed that penalty because he did everything right. The only thing I wasn't sure about is if the green had not come out. But uh, I applaud NASCAR for straightening that out. There you see car owner Richard Childress. Uh-oh. Somebody has lost a tire and wheel out on the racetrack. You don't want me to, do you? Look at the centers. Uh, Pick the fine time. They're, they're me oval egg shaped right out there as if somebody didn't get some lug nuts tight perhaps good catch and, uh, car, it that won't be? be hard to figure out who it is <laughs> yeah it's not like when there's one glove on the track <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and by the way they never did determine whose glove that was in california this is tim Sauter, the 36 car from the looks of the left rear quarter panel and the looks of the sparks I no more calls found please. where it goes where it belongs So Kevin Harvick is put back in second behind Boris Said, or behind Said, Said Harvick. And then here's Paul Menard, who's had a great run here today and uh, brings a new sponsor to the series, which spent Inspector Cluzo Hammond on a mission to find out what that was all about. Hey guys, I'm down here in Mexico City. We've been kind of hanging out around the hotel and guess who I run into here? I got my man here, Paul Menard, and, and Paul, what about the situation with DEI? I mean, DEI right now, I mean, they are owning the Bush Series when it comes to championships. I mean, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mark Truex Jr. How about Paul Menard? Can we pull it off this year? Yeah, that's what we're going to try to do. You know, we've got, uh, got all the tools in place. Well, well, Paul, a minute ago, you know, you were talking about your new sponsor. I mean, Hot Shot. 
kills bad bugs. I mean, you know, because of that, it just brings back up these, the, this thought process of the Intimidator, the Terminator. So that's got to make you the Exterminator, right? You got something here? I got some right here. Let's, uh, let's find this, out. Does this stuff really work? It does, huh? it does. If it's in the air or on the ground, the stuff will kill it. Well, I'm going to tell you what, big boy. I want to see what you got. <laughs> Chief, I think I got them all. You got them all? How'd I do? Well, I mean, when you left out of here, man, you were really nailing them. I mean, you were knocking them down, I'm telling you. You know what? I got somebody right now that's been bugging me. You got any, do you think it's my? You're talking about DW, aren't you? See, you've been watching. Right, let's see what we can take care of. Exactly, I, that's what I need right here. Some of this stuff for DW, yeah. All right, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, look at that. I'll tell you what, these guys are bugging me. They had a lot to do last night. Oh, yeah. Know. Hot shot. Nice of them. <laughs> yeah. Right now, Mr. Menard and that 11 car sitting up there in the top five in fifth position. And I, I think definitely people has probably underestimated Paul Menard's road racing ability. He's actually had a Looks lot of like success. We're going. He has a lucky dog and a uh, pitch car leg drop. Kenny Wallace uh, got the free pass on this one. I think we've underestimated him, I mean, in all of his abilities. He is, but probably in my opinion, after the about middle of last year, the most improved bus driver out there. Uh, he's really, uh, he's really got his act together. When they take the green flag, there'll be 16 laps left in the Telcel Motorola 200, presented by Banamex. Even have the wave in Mexico City. Turned it back on, not going green. Waved off the restart. Jason Keller makes a pit stop. He's the last car on the lead lap. The last of 32 cars that are on the lead lap here. As we get set for what most of these drivers hope will be the final restart of the afternoon. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Welcome back to Mexico City. A short drive away, the pyramids of Teotihuacan. Completed in the first 250 years AD, the Pyramid of the Sun is the third largest in the world. Mexico City, the world's largest. I have never, not in New York, not in Boston, not even on Brawley School Road, seen traffic such as they have in Mexico City. It's unbelievable. All hours of the day and night. Jam-packed. There's only 25 million people down here, so. Seems like about that many cars. They're all on the road at one time. Dick Bergeron in Boris's pit. With Trip Bruce, have you got enough time now? We've had a lot of caution laps. Can Boris win this race? I think we're going we're going on 16 green here to the end, and, and that's plenty of time. You know, he's conserved the car to this point. I haven't seen him run real hard all, all weekend since we've been out here. So, you know, it's up to him now, and he can get it done. We know that, and that's why we came down here with him to win this race so we're in we're in the spot we tried to be in all week this is what we planned for so no. okay lap times of the leader in second place mike have been virtually identical for the last several laps under green oh it'll be quite a battle and add kevin harvick to it into these closing laps boris has an interesting strategy he wants to race next Dell cup he has a lot of car owners that want him to run the road races but he won't take a ride unless it includes an oval track package too because he'd like to be on the cup circuit full time you know, he ran about 10 or 12 races last year, uh, two road courses, some of the restrictor plate races for MB2 Motorsports. Jay Fry and the group over there. Denny Hamlin, Daryl right here, 15 to go. Can't spin those tires on this restart. We've been talking about a lot on older tires. He hadn't been that good on the restarts. I know uh, Kevin Harvey got up there and almost got around him, and Morris will be jumping on him like a grasshopper on a June bug. 15 to go. He got a pretty good restart that time on Boris said in the nine car. He knows. It's, it's, this is when you find out who's been holding back. What's left. Boris looks inside. Hamlin covers the spot. Boris takes a little tighter line there getting into turn one. Hamlin was a little freer looked like getting through there and you can see the difference. Opened up a nice gap. 
Yeah, right now, Boris said, has his hands full with Kevin Harvick in the 21 car. Takes a look to the left side, does the crossover move down this straightaway. Harvick's been really good for a lap or two right after a restart, and then uh, then the other guys seem to pull away from him a little bit, but he's been pretty, pretty stout for a lap or two. KJ Ailey hangs right with the second and third place battle. Paul Menard a little further back, Johnny Sauter, and rookie Bernie Lamar also having a very strong day here. He's in seventh. Kyle Busch restarts 21st. Bernie Lamar spun out earlier in the race, and uh, here he is recovering up there, running, you know, running a nice race. This kid's got some talent. John Ooh, he and John are going to share a little uh, real estate. Yeah, John bounced off the curve and into Bernie. And as you pointed wow. out earlier, John Wood in the 47 car, he's had a pretty eventful week, was fast in practice and had the transmission problems in qualifying, had to start a career of the field. Now he's worked his way well up into the top 10. Somebody got up in those marbles out there. That turn is really, really bad on the outside. That was John Wood got up a little too high there entering. He lost his spot to Carl Edwards in the 60 car. Now coming up on that pack, Adrian Fernandez and Jorge Guedes. Starting to see a little blocking going on here and there. Getting a little cars getting a little wider than they were earlier in the day. The look pace at this. level is running out. Yeah, there. look at this. Down inside. Gosens in the 90, the Belgian driver, trying to pick up a spot there. Had been fast all day long, trying to recover from a pit stop miscue on his last time on pit road with the 90 car. He did get past Getters, which moves him up to 11. He's had a real good day, actually. You know, taking off with the, with the wheel not on. Uh, recovering from that is uh, pretty good. Uh oh, oh, oh go? Fernand oh, Getters gets turned around. I'm that was Carlos. Yeah, that was Carlos. Yeah, Carlos. Right the 14 car. Carlos Centeris. And ooh, that is ugly. Right in front of Jason Keller in the one car. Jason just barely gets stopped. He'll lose a bunch of positions because of that. This is what we always see when we get down to about 10 or 12 laps of the road course. We see more cars spinning out with help and without help. You'll see guys running 15th or 20th, uh, and all of a sudden they're running in the top five because they all wadded up over there somewhere. Getters works underneath Lopez, moves the 66 up a notch. Now this gets started. Well, the 14's just down on the inside, oh, nowhere yeah. to go, and uh, got into the side of uh, Getters. Carlos Contreras. And this right here is like, well, this is the only chance I got right here. Not a real good one, but oh, he made it. Poor Jason Keller. Wrong place, wrong time. In the one car. Denny Hamlin and Boris said. Now said's about 1.1 seconds behind Hamlin last time by. Still 13 laps to go. Anything can happen. Oh, yeah. Bush Series Racing on Fox is presented by Team Chevy in the 303 horsepower Monte Carlo SS. Chevy, an American revolution. Denny Hamlin is trying to open it up on Boris Said. He's now 1.7 seconds ahead. Adrian Fernandez has moved up to ninth. And Mark Gosens has climbed into the top 10 at the expense of Bernie Lamar. Trying to march back to the front, Kyle Busch has climbed to 15. I know that uh, Denny is Hamlin in a 20 car. He's got a nice lead there, but I hope he's not running the tires off of that thing. And Boris maybe is sitting back there being a little wiser, managing his stuff a little bit better. 11 laps to go. It's a long time. Meanwhile, you see Boris said in the nine, he has definitely pulled away from Kevin Harvick in the 21. You talked about it. It's almost like Kevin Harvick is just good on colder tires right after a restart. Yeah, and, and you watch the two cars. Watch the 20. He's sliding that thing around quite a bit. And Boris is very smooth and precise. But I think it's just so important. Denny Hammond looks out that windshield, hit those marks. He got a little debris there on the nine car, Boris said, that uh, Hope his water temperature, you better keep an eye on that. Those Dodges are real, real bad about overheating anyway. It definitely put a little more front down force in the car and help the drag, but yeah, as hot as it is, it could definitely overheat that engine. Because that's where the air goes through to cool the water in the radiator. And he's gonna have to hustle to get up, you know, you get up behind the car in front of you, create a vacuum there and pull it off, but uh, he's got a ways to go to make that happen. Now he's 1.8 seconds back. He lost a tenth to Hamlin. That that lap and there's a couple of different lines up there in the S's. I think Boris is a little tight there in one. He kind of slides it out a little bit further than Denny does. Denny's car seems to be real free. 
And Harvick has fallen to pressure, or he's under pressure from J.J. Yaley, Paul Menard, and Johnny Sauter. Tell you what, Johnny Sauter in that orange double zero car, he's had a good solid weekend. Was fast in practice, qualified up there in the top three, and uh, just been good and solid, good solid run. West Crew Chief Harold Holly has had an incredible amount of success with these Bush cars. Think about Bobby Hamilton uh, Jr. Jeff Green. And Jeff Green yeah. won the championship. And uh, I think he's really got this thing on, uh, got this program turned around right here and got it going good. Behind him is Carl Edwards, 8.6 seconds off the lead. There's Edwards, who had a disastrous weekend here last year, a hard crash just past the chicane head on into the concrete barriers, but he's had a Almost a quiet day here today. It was a little eventful at the start of the right. race. There were some issues on a pit stop and all, but he's recovered nicely with his 60 car. And the guy right behind him, John Wood, I'm really, I'm tickled for John because he was just torn up as a can of kraut about not setting on the pole after being the fastest car in practice. So it's good to see him recover and get a good run going, a good finish here. Had transmission trouble in qualifying. Right now he's the eighth place car. Now, just to update you on our leaders with nine laps to go, that time Boris was just a little bit quicker than Denny Hamlin, but still well over. Well, that lap there, actually, he ran, Hamlin ran faster than said, so it's almost two and a half second lead for Hamlin now over Boris said. Here's your ninth place car, Adrian Fernandez. And uh, he got a lot of damage in that dust up with Kyle Busch and Michelle Jourdain. Here, Peter. No caution yet. It's the spotter calling out. Got to guard the sand Boyer. trap. Oh, and it's Bernie Lamar. And it's going to be tough to get out of there. That's almost like the gravel pit. We don't have a caution just yet. He's fired up yeah. and he's going to get out. Caution is out. Now, that's where two drivers drove through that area after they went off earlier. But no matter, the caution is out with nine to go. Dick Bergman. I've been listening to Boris said radio Mike trying to pick up on what might be going on with that car since he's dropping back. I haven't heard anything just asked his crew chief trip Bruce if he had heard anything and he said no he did say that both cars lead and second are running about the same lap times not quite Boris is a little bit behind remember last year Mike when Boris had the problem of pitting when the pit was closed he went into the pits on third came out in 31st and he drove through the field like a madman wound up spinning out I'm sort of wondering if that spin is going through his mind at about this time and if he doesn't want to pressure the car too terribly much Jeff well Dick up here in the pit of uh, Denny Hamlin everything right now is just kind of laid back all they're doing it for this guy is just giving him lap times spotters are saying and let him know the racetrack is clean and right now he's hitting all his marks and just steadily walking away from the rest of the field well two cars I think that definitely like to see this caution here is we've got eight laps to go so we'll probably get back racing with about five or six to go would be Boris said in the nine car chance to cool the tires down maybe get another run back at Denny Hamlin but I think the other car that likes this caution is Kyle Busch in that five car he's almost made it back to the top ten he has come through the field Dick well, Boris has just now come on the radio and said that his water temperature is 245. The crew has looked at the grill and said there's a piece of trash on it. Trip Bruce, his crew chief, has told him to take care of his stuff. If he's going to win the race, he's got to be hammered down from here with a hot engine. Now, Clint Boyer, uh, excuse me, did go off the track, and I'm not sure whether it was Boyer here. No, nope, he didn't bring out the caution. He gets back going again. Looked like he's had a lot of damage, though, to the left side, as though maybe he and Lamar had some sort of an issue. Almost looked like they did the synchronized spinning right there. Tried to avoid oh, each other. Yeah, they spun almost simultaneously together down there. There they go. Yeah, they're just trying. I think one spun and the other tried to miss him. Clint Boyer in the two got back going. Bernie Lamar trying to drive out of that gravel pit and possibly get over there to that grassy area. Just couldn't quite get out of there and couldn't get going. So we have tied the number of caution flags from last year's race at eight. And with seven laps to go, can Denny Hamlin hold on and hold off Boris Set, Kevin Harvick, and J.J. Yaley. Harvick is really good on these restarts. For his tires cool off, he's good for a couple of laps. That could be bad news for Boris, particularly if Boris's engine's laying down just a tad on him from the overheating problem. So this could be good news for that 21 car. I think J.J.'s pretty good. 
Got a number of cars up here with uh, with an opportunity right now with this caution out. And Denny Hammond would love to see Boris said and Kevin Harvick start duking it out back there for second, and that way he can put a little distance on them as he did a while ago after that restart. We have three of our road course ringers in the top ten. Boris said in second. Adrian Fernandez is ninth. Uh, Mark Goosen's in, uh, Gosen's in tenth, and you almost have to include Paul Menard in that group in that yellow car in fifth place. He has a lot of road course experience as well. As I look at the nose of that 20 car, he does, his grill is almost entirely open, so he's not going to have any heating issues. You look at the nine there behind him. Look at all the tape on those lower grills. All he's really got is that top grill, and it's what it's the one that's covered up. So Hammond, uh, what's going on with the 20 car? Are they happy? Well, Daryl, I think right now, as Denny Hamlin just called him, he said, no matter what happens, guys, you guys have done a great job. But then his crew chief, David Rogers, tried to call him back, and he said, guys, I can't hear you. He's not heard anything for the last 10 laps since the last restart. So a uh, little bit of concern here. And the biggest thing is he doesn't understand how many laps he's got to go in this race. So uh, a little bit of a tense moment right now, but I believe they're going to be able to work it through and uh, they'll be okay before the end of the race. If they can get the message to him, go as hard as you can. You see a checkered <laughs> right. flag and then maybe make another half a lap. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I'd worry about being able to talk to him right now. He knows what he's got to do. But, but Mike and Darrell, when I look at Denny Hamlin, I think about this kid. I mean, he won the Budweiser shootout about a month ago down in Daytona. A year and a half ago, he was racing late models in Virginia. He would go to Nextel Cup races and sit in the grandstand as a fan. And here he is leading uh, the Bush Series race right on the fringe of his very first Bush Series win. A lot of flat track experience for Hamlin, and it's about to all pay off. Next weekend, NASCAR moves to Las Vegas. Coverage begins Friday with Nextel Cup qualifying on speed. Saturday, Bush qualifying on speed. And Nextel Cup practice with the Bush race, both on FX. Sunday, NASCAR raced a green flag edition on speed, leading up to the Nextel Cup race with the Las Vegas 400 on Fox and the NASCAR victory lane on speed. You know that 21 car in third place there with Kevin Harvick. He is the points leader and he is going to run all the races. So uh, you know this is a very, very important day for him. Trouble points for Ron. Wise. Yes trouble for Ron Fellows here. And that car right behind Kevin Harvick J.J. Ailey in the 18 car. He's second in the points. So both those guys they've kind of got to look at the big picture here of things. Ron looks like he's got into the back of someone and uh, closed the grill opening up and his car's overheating and they're having to put the trying to get the grill opening. Uh, Get some air through the grill. Now that car is owned by Kevin Harvick, who is driving the third place car right now, which is owned by Richard Childress. This is a team that won the Daytona Bush Series race with Tony Stewart uh, two or three weeks ago. See Trip Bruce, the crew chief. We talked to him a while ago. I kind of like what he had to say, Larry. We, we worked all weekend. We sat on pole. We worked to be in the position we're in now. And like we said in the opening, it's all up to the driver. It's in his hands. And they had a little different strategies we saw in the beginning of the race. But with enough cautions, cautions coming at the right time, it has worked out here. Is uh, they're going to get a shot at it with about six laps to go. Strategy usually is pretty good if you got a fast car. Just about any strategy. Now, since this restart will occur within 10 laps to go, all the lead lap cars, all 32 of them, are lined up before all of the cars that are one or more laps down. So we'll see a, probably a whole lot of bumping and shuffling and position change, if not hurt feelings, on the first lap after the green here. Well, you ride around here like this, your tires get pick up a lot of debris. We've seen that on the racetrack. Your brakes cool off, you charge off into turn one, and she just doesn't do the same thing she's been doing all day long. And uh, besides that, the guy was in my way. You see Bernie Lamar at the back, he just made a pit stop as did uh, Danny O'Quinn, so they'll get to move up ahead of the lapped cars before we get back to green. Right now, Kevin Harvick in position to pad his point lead, but only by a little because J.J. Yaley is just one position behind him on the racetrack. Denny Hamlin, two positions in front of him. I tell you, it's a Bush deal. I know we're, we're only two races into this season coming in here, but the top 17 was only separated by 99 points, so you can make a big gain or a big loss today at this road course race. I believe it's the year of the JJ's. JJ Yaley, JJ Reddick set a lot of records in the NCAA this year, uh, scoring records. Jimmy Johnson, JJ, 
think it's the year of the JJ's. Has that look about it, doesn't it? It does. Is that all I get to? Hmm? We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Interesting theory. I mean, I've thought about that for days. <laughs> yeah, good. you had it written in this note. <laughs> I got it. I got it written down. <laughs> all right, here we go. All passing to the what side, guys? Left. Left. Thank you very much. It'll be six laps to go when they take the green. Clean them up. Don't spin the tires. Hit your marks. Get what you can get. Yeah, everybody's pretty much out there on old tires. You can see Denny Hamlin trying to scrub those tires one last time just to get the, the debris off of them where he can get a good, good clean restart here with six laps to go. Oh, my goodness, Bush. Didn't get the best of restarts right there. And Hamlin, will, or uh, the 21 car, Harvick will pounce on him, I can tell you that. But Boris said the nine puts the block on it. Kevin Harvick as they go down into the chicane. Boy, Boris poured it through the chicane that time. They were both way off line, Boris. Boris is taking a lot lower entry into turn one there than the other guys are. Defensive driving, Darrell? That must be, because uh, that's not the hot lick. Trying to hold off Harvick for a second. I tell you what, Denny Hamlin in the 20, he has been on he, his mark just, on the restarts. Uh-oh. Fernandez off course. Yeah. They were three wide into that corner. And he was running in the ninth position and made his way back into the top ten. This is when you can dodge all those cars that are running into each other and bouncing off of each other, running off the track. You can pick up a lot of spots. Show you what happened here. That John Wood just ahead of Fernando. Outside, looking outside. Out Goes outside. outside. Five's outside. Now inside. Oh, inside. Uh oh. Boy, John Wood just got taken out by the 90 car. And Fernandez was just trying to find a clear path. He just flat pushed him out of his yeah. way. And we talked about that at the top of the show here with six laps to go. John Wood is way off in the weeds. Yeah, he, and he was having a great run, too. That's the force he was up in eighth place. Yeah, that's two cars in the top ten that was involved in that wreck right there that spun out. Five to go for Denny Hamlin in the 20 car. And they have pushed Ron Fellows behind the wall. Yeah, that water was running out. That thing had a busted radiator. Uh-oh, 35 in the fence. Hard. Turn eight. Regan Smith, the caution is out. He had one and eight. Some and eight. Regan had worked his way into the top 15 in 13th position. And he's going to get the car going, but we do have the caution as our leader took five to go. This is when you run great all day, work hard, get yourself in a good position. Pit strategy pays off, and you get spun out. Ninth caution flag of the day with still 31 cars on the lead lap, and Getters, number 58, would be the free pass car. And Denny Hamlin, he's going to have to have at least one more of those good restarts again. And that's if we have a free pass car this late in the race. Yeah, and uh, the other thing is, I we think, don't. I think Boris has really got to be on his game here because that 21 car can pounce on you on these restarts. Darrell, the way the Boris ran down into turn number one, Mirror driving Harvick rather than chasing Hamlin kind of tells me he doesn't have anything for Denny. I don't think he does. Uh, that 20 car has been stout from the get go. That was he and the five car were the only competition for us, really. And uh, looks like he's going to be able to pull it off to me. Speaking of the five, Kyle Busch has gained a couple of spots. He's, uh, he's up to eight. Yeah, these cautions <laughs> keep hemping Kyle Busch in the five car because he'll get him one or two positions and he gets a caution to get caught back up. He very well could end up with a top five finish here. He has such a fast car, and if he'd have just been a little more patient, yep. he would be leading this race. But instead, he took out Michelle Jourdain as both crash battling for the lead. Here's what puts us under caution. Regan Smith, Mark McFarland, and the Navy. Car turns around the McDonald's machine. Right here. Oh, it looked like Jorge Getters in the 66 just barely squeaks by. Hey, let's see if we can talk to Boris. Let's just, we'll get it right from a horse's mouth. What do you say? What do you say? Sounds good. Hey, Boris said, this is a DW up in the Fox Sports booth, buddy. Uh, what kind of shape you in there? You got anything for that 20 car? Let's see what he says. Hey, Boris said, uh, the DW in the Fox Sports booth, bud. Uh, you got anything for that 20 car? Got anything for the 20 car, for us, or anybody else? <laughs> talking about his water temp. Yeah, we're trying to get that get that worked out. Want to try him again? Are we on the right channel here, guys? 
Say so again. Boris said, DW Fox Sports, uh, you, you got us? Boris, can you hear Fox Sports call you, DW? Apparently he's got, uh, got the crew, but not us. I'm not sure he's even hearing the crew. That's okay, I'll just talk to the crew. Hey guys, <laughs> y'all got anything for that 20 car? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be a little bit tight right now through the S. 20 car can see there real good. Um, that's probably what hurts them the most, but you never know here, you know, Boris is gonna give it everything, you know. 110% here, so that's where we're at. Roger, you're not worried uh, the water temp's gonna be okay, just got a few laps to go. That seems to be maintained, and then you know yourself, that's what it's got to do. If it's maintained, it'll be okay. Just crash on the grill. All right, bud, thanks a lot. You think uh, Hammond will talk to you, DW? Uh, Jeff Hammond, this DW up in the Fox Sports booth. Uh, you got me, bud? Do I got to talk to you? <laughs> hey, down here in the 20 car pit, guys, and uh, DW, I think you can probably relate to this. That last caution flag came out, and you can imagine how Denny Hamlin felt. It's like, darn, man, I can't believe we keep having these cautions. I mean, the frustration of being able to work as hard as he's worked all day long, open up that gap on Boris said to only have a caution flag, erase it, and put Boris right back on his back bumper. And the other thing is he's complaining about Boris kind of laying off of him and making a big gap there trying to get a run on him. And he's told NASCAR, he said, can we do something about that? He's laying off me awful uh, good ways. He, they're not real happy about that either. Thanks, Jeff. There is Denny Hamlin. He's led almost half this race, which has four laps to go, and we will go to overtime if needed. We've mentioned uh, that Ron Fellows is out of the race. He's now joined by Todd Cleaver. The Roush Racing rookie has just taken his 3M Ford behind the wall after having a, a good run on the lead lap all day. You know, a car that we talked about earlier is just, he's kept his nose clean for the most part. He's sitting there in the top 10. He's a top Mexican driver right now, Carlos Contreras in the 14 car. But I'm gonna tell you what, the car behind him, Jamie McMurray in the 64 car, it looks like a beer can that's been sitting on the side of the interstate for about two weeks. There's not a bit, piece on that race car that is not bent, but he has made and fought and clawed his way back to the 11th position. Oh, I don't know there. Roof looks pretty good. Roof looks good. <laughs> I have to tell you, that back end being open like that, that's probably picked him up a little speed. I bet you don't reckon Rusty told him to pull that off here, do you? Car is a mess. Look at that thing. I don't think they had to pull it off, Daryl. Here's what happened to Jamie. Whoa, baby. He just snaps around. And then comes out and collects Adrian Fernandez, who was minding his own business, trying to get into the corner, and uh, knocked the toe out of Fernandez's car. He has uh, rebounded currently runs in the 12th position. Yeah, I think it's interesting, Larry. I mean, we talk about what's more important today. Things like that happen on the track and a car all beat up, no. Pit strategy. They got there because they made their pit stops at the right time, even with torn up race cars. Denny Hamlin on the verge and perhaps three laps away from victory in Mexico. Listen, I, I don't care if you've done it a hundred times or if this is your first time. That kid is a nervous wreck right now. His heart is pounding out of his chest. He might be acting cool and calm, but I gotta tell you, when you look in that mirror and you say, man, these restarts are killing us, I just wanna go home. I wanna get this thing in the bank. And, and he was just so solid last year. He finished fifth in the points, had a lot of top 10 finishes. They just couldn't close the door on going to victory lane. And here they are uh, one or two laps away from their first victory here, race number three in 2006. You think about Martin Truex down here last year. He got off to a shaky start last year, but he came here and he dominated this race. And I think right. it jump-started his season. And uh, Hamlin looks like he's on the same deal. Yeah, put Truex on track uh, to win his second consecutive Bush Series championship. He is not racing in the Bush Series this year. Uh, might make a selected start later in the season, but his intent is to concentrate on Nextel Cup exclusively. And, uh, and one of the main reasons he's here is to get some seat time on a road course for Sonoma and Watkins Glen. And we've got five guys in the top 10 that are doing the full double duty. You got Denny Hamlin, you got Kevin Harvick, JJ Yaley, you've got Carl Edwards, Kyle Bush. All those guys are running both full Bush and Nextel Cup schedules. So right now the leading non-regular in NASCAR is Martin Gosens in ninth. Carlos Contreras is 10th. Adrian Fernandez is 12th. Jorge Getters is 15th. Chris Cook is 16th. 
Jeff. You know, guys, we've been talking about the caution flags, how they've been benefiting guys as far as saving fuel. I just wonder right now, this possible extended green-white checker, how is it going to affect the 20 car? I mean, they pitted pretty early, and, you know, we're cutting it pretty thin on fuel anyway. So, uh, you know, this could come into play before the end of the day. Well, if we restart here and go to conclusion, Jeff will be just barely at regulation distance. But I just think, Jeff, we've had so many cautions. And remember, it's roughly two to one. I just feel like they could probably run two or three extra laps here and not have an issue because of the cautions. See the guy up here on the right up here. That's how the guys know they're coming to the green. Uh, they don't wait to give the green flag or the one to go down here at the line. They come off of uh, out of the S's back there and they'll give the uh, coming to the green sign to hold the green flag up and they know they're going racing this time by. Let's see if Denny Hamlin can have another one of those good restarts again. You would think Boris said has watched this for the last two or three times and uh, Maybe he might take a little, little advantage a little better. The problem that. Boris has got is he's got to be a little defensive like we were talking about. I think he'd like to jump on the back of Hamlin, but he's also got to protect uh, that Harvick doesn't get by him. And Yaley's sitting back there thinking, you know, maybe those two guys will get to roughing each other up and I'll go sliding through and the Gibbs team will come home one, two. I saw some paper flying. Was that the paper off of Sid's grill? He would hope so. Nope, afraid not. I don't think that's a, he's going to be okay. It's at 2:30 and 2:40. They don't like it. They don't like that kind of temp, but they'll make it to the end of the race. It'll be two laps to go, and they take the green. Another caution flag would put us into overtime. Imagine that. Want to bet? Nope. <laughs> Denny Hamlin, the biggest restart of his career right here. And he sure leaves that outside open, but it's okay because Boris isn't trying to get, get up there and get on him. He didn't get quite the jump on Boris said as he did the last two times. Plus, Boris said is able to pull away from Harvick just a little bit. Remember, Harvick has been pretty good after restarts. Let's see how he runs down into turn one this time without Harvick right up on his back bumper. Middle line. Yeah, he's, he's not down on the bottom like he was. He's still in a little low, which tells me the car might be a little tight, that it won't turn right there. There's the track. Carl Edwards in the 60 car off track. Now he's going to have to be careful where he comes back on and uh, not gain any positions. But Daryl Tripp Bruce told us, Boris said's crew chief, and you can see the distance he's lost. The car won't turn up through those S's. Yeah, and it, it shows. That's why he's taking that low line into turn. Ooh, Hamlin locked up the front brake. Daryl oh, getting yeah. in there. Well, that just tells you he's going as hard as he can right now. now. This is Adrian Fernandez trying to get back to the top 10. He's in the 12th position right now. Hamlin gaining some distance on Boris said and a car off back in the S's. It was John Wood who went off and then came right back on. These guys look pretty content right now to hold what they got. Uh, I think Boris is probably saying, well, I can't catch him. The main thing I want to do is finish second. Harvick back there is going pretty hard. Pretty even gap. Yaley, Menard, Sauter. Kyle Busch will pick up another spot. White We're flag this time. Coming to the white. And he has stretched it out on Boris said right now. J.J. Yaley in that 18 car fighting Kevin Harvick in the 21 for third. This is first and second in points right now as well. Denny Hamlin opened up a second and a half on Boris said that lap. Yeah, Denny Hamlin just needs to hit his marks for about six more corners. Look out that windshield. The best thing for Boris said right now is Yaley putting the pressure to third place Harvick, the blue car. Yeah, it looks like it. Yaley's got a little bit faster car. I don't know if he can find a spot to get by, though. Kyle Busch is up to seventh, by the way, back there. Yeah, he picked up a spot when Carl Edwards went off. And he's caught that there he back. Is. Yeah, he's right there. Five car. A little curb hopping. Yeah, but that's a per that thing is pretty, man. It's doing she's, it just right. She's hopping those curves and staying straight. Got the right package under that baby today. Well, he said at the top of the show, told one of our pit reporters that, how is he going to do today? He says, we're going to win. Nothing like confidence. Hamlin's previous best finish in the Bush Series, 
was third last July at Loudon, New Hampshire. He finished 15th here last year. Well, it's been uh, all about him today. It has that. Denny Hamlin in his 39th career start. Here comes Jay. Win. Look at this. Jay Daly and Harvick. Harvick uh, gets it. Didn't quite make it. Johnny Sauter beats Kyle Busch in the five back to the line. And you know what? I, I, I am happy for, for David Rogers, the crew chief for Denny Hamlin. He started out as the crew chief last year for Jason Leffler in the 11 Nextel Cup car. Things did not work out. Joe Gibbs had enough faith to keep him on board, and here he gets his very first win as a Bush Series crew chief. J.J. Yaley's crew congratulating Hamlin's crew. Denny Hamlin led half the race, 40 laps today and scoring his first NASCAR Bush Series win in the Telcel 200 presented by Motorola. Don't you just love a first time winner? He's fun to watch. That kid has got some talent. Chevy congratulates Denny Hamlin and the number 20 Monte Carlo SS on another great team Chevy victory Chevy an American Revolution. For the first time in his short Bush Series career 39 races Denny Hamlin gets to smoke the hides and then ride what's left of victory lane. Tell you what, this uh, this kid's gonna go to Victory Lane, I think, a lot. The runner-up, pole sitter Boris said, is with Dick Bergman. How frustrating it was it for you to watch that 20 car and not be able to catch and pass him. It was frustrating. I mean, I was really trying. I mean, that kid is uh, he's really good. I mean, there's just no I mean, he just flat out beat me today. Uh, Tony Stewart must have given him the magic dust. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I still feel pretty proud. I mean, Ray Everham gave me this chance with the Ingersoll Rand Dodge Charger and. Uh, you know, all the crew guys gave me a great car. We were just a little too tight at the end. And I think if I was in front of him, I probably could have kept him behind me because he was only faster than me in the S's and I could catch him in turn one. But, you know, it was just a strange day. You know, all the different pit strategies. You know, at one point I thought, man, we're out of it. And then all of a sudden we're in it, you know. So totally different strategies with the 20 and us. And we, you know, both come out first and second. So I'm still pretty happy with second place. I'm not going to complain about that. But, uh, you know, we had 40,000 Ingersoll Rand people probably watching on TV or the uh, Internet. and. Uh, it's pretty good for them and vitamin water. I need that now. <laughs> Congratulations on a great run, Mike. Horace's previous best in the Bush Series was fourth at Watkins Glen in 2001, so this is a career best for him. Well, I guess it doesn't make you feel too bad to no. get beaten by one of your students. Right. That's right. Go ahead, Danny. And here's Denny Hamlin about to climb out, a first-time winner in the NASCAR Bush Series. Jeff Hammond is there. Oh, man, I tell you right now, they're throwing some Coca-Cola and water and everything like that. But for Denny Hamlin right now, tell us about that, man. I mean, for 40 laps, you showed the professor the way around this racetrack. Great job today. Yeah, I can't say no for this entire crew. Uh, everybody knows how good Joe Gibbs' stuff is on road courses. And all I did was turn the wheel. Uh, Dave Rogers, I can't be more happy to, to, to drive for him. This whole Rockwell team, it's been a while since they got their win, and uh, I'm glad I could give it to them. It's, uh, I never imagined my first race, the first one be on a road course, but uh, you know, it just seems like these flat tracks seem to fit me in. Uh, man, we had a great car. Well, what about those last few restarts? What were you thinking? Well, I knew if I could just get away, I was going to be in good shape. Uh, the problem is just, you know, getting away, but... Uh, you know, we were strong on restarts as well as the long run. Now we are able to pull away and just run my line. Strategy and discipline right now, Mike, is what brought this young man to victory lane. Thanks, Jeff. Let's have a look at the NASCAR Bush Series point standings after race number three. Kevin Harvick's lead over J.J. Yaley. They finished one spot apart, so it grows by five points. Denny Hamlin, two spots ahead of Harvick at the checkered flag, climbs a little bit in third. Jamie McMurray, who had a tough start to the day, but finished 10th, is fourth in points. And Clint Boyer, who had a couple of off tracks and finished 16th, is fifth in the standings. Well, I, I love road racing because it takes in so many elements. Got to have a great car, but you got to have great pit strategy, and you got to have a smart driver. 
my kind of racing. And I want to give a call to Mark Gosens. Uh, comes here, makes his first Bush Series start. He finishes in the top 10, finishes ninth. And how about Carlos Contreras? We talked about him. Finishes 11th today, the top finishing Mexican driver. Next week, the NASCAR on Fox crew moves to Las Vegas. Coverage begins Friday on speed with Nextel Cup qualifying. Saturday, Bush Series qualifying on speed and Nextel Cup practice, followed by the Bush Series race, both on FX. Sunday, NASCAR race day green flag edition. That'll be on speed and the race. The Las Vegas 400 is on Fox. NASCAR victory lane on speed wraps it all up. Promotional consideration paid for by Denny Hamlin first career victory and a pretty popular one Joe Gibbs racing two great cars and a first and a fourth place finish. And all the girls go do, 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 do,